we are back. We're back, mm-hmm. Bumblebees. <laughs> At first I was like the audacity and then I was like, but my man's got me. <laughs> you do it again? No, that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That was perfect. Season two, episode 11. Uh, Crazy. It is. Isn't that? Okay, I know it's a joke now, but really, that's insane to think about. Yeah, this puts us at 63 episodes. We started this as a joke. Yeah. (laughs) At our kitchen table. Yep. So speaking of which, we are two people with opinions on the internet who have people send us emails so that we can break down what's going on in said email and give our unbiased opinions. We are not PhDs. We are not psychiatrists, psychotherapists, or... Anything else? Just two people on the internet giving advice. And if this is your first time here, I'm Chris. I'm Peaches. And we are going to be your host today. (laughs) Sounded so cheesy. And we're going to be your host today. Thank you for joining us. How do you do that? I don't know. Just be goofy. Enjoy I can't even like, my tongue can't even fathom making those those movements necessary to create that. that, That's more of a vocal thing. Just thinking too hard on it, I think. I don't think about it. I just do it. You know, I <laughs> I went to go say it and then my brain just stopped working. There is, so our son has to go to speech therapy and the speech therapist was explaining to me people, children and adults who tend to have like speech problems bite their tongue a lot. And she's like, when you think about it, it makes sense. Their tongue doesn't move properly to make sounds. So how would they know how to chew properly with the tongue movements? I bite my tongue a lot, right? but I don't think that I have a speech impediment or I an do. impairment. So, <laughs> my um, lisp is so bad. I'm just a fat ass and like food, so I chew really fast to mm-hmm. try to get more in my mouth, and it, it tends to, to bite me in the tongue, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a little bit of life stuff. And normally we do, so for those of you who are new here, normally we do a little bit of banter back and forth. We have conversations about life and updates and things of that nature. And then we get into the emails. We do. Um, mm-hmm. We have been, and we're going to talk through things real time. Some of this mm-hmm. she's aware of, some of this she's not aware of. Uh, we have been looking at land. Okay. I, we, and by, by we, I mean, I have been obsessing over it for about two weeks now. And I have found websites mm-hmm. where I can go online and shop by acreage at lowest price to try to find like the biggest bang for my buck. Mm-hmm. And of course, everything that is like super affordable is in the middle of the fucking desert. And I don't want to live in the middle of the desert. But I found some land in Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia that it's in the mountains. And I'm okay. about that life. Yeah. I think what we should do is we should find a plot of land that we want, save up the money to buy said land. And then reach out to everyone that we genuinely love and care about and see if they can contribute something. Yeah. We're going to buy 50 acres. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us $100,000. These are all hypothetical numbers, obviously. Um, What what can you throw down on this, right? We've already got the money. We're going to buy the land one way or the other. And they're like, oh, I can give you 10 grand. Okay, well, there's an acre. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. um, and we could we could parcel out the land to people that we love and then they can build their, their shit on our property and we can Mm -hmm. have our own little community out there. I'm so here for this. Right. I want to have a barn in the middle of that. Like a communal cook area. Yes, That we can all go to maybe once a week, like on a Sunday night and. Oh, that would be gangster. It really would be and have like other women or men if they're interested in that and farming and. Doing the plant shit and the apothecary and whatnot. Yeah. Do a big communal garden. Right. 50 acres of land is a lot. It's a lot. You know, and depending on where you live, you you would do seasonal vegetables. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like that, that could really be a thing. And if there's 10 families living on 50 acres, which is very doable, yeah. it's very doable to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you have an entire tribe of people that are working to be sustainable. You could have eight to 10 people living on that land and still have room for a gun range and dirt bike tracks and fun shit to do in the mountains. And if we could find one that has a river running through it and we have our own water source, total off grid living. Yeah. I would probably never go to a store again. Are you kidding me? Tiny homes. And then like a giant communal barn dominium. Right. Yeah. I think that that would be super cool. And though that's not something that I've ever really wanted to do. I've always wanted like, you know, five to 10 acres just for myself Mm -hmm. to like play on. I don't even need a house. You know, I could get a camper and just go live on the camper on the property so that we can travel the world and do shit. But I would need to get a Connex cont- container on there for all of our toys. Right. You know, because otherwise <laughs> we would have to travel with all the toys. Mm-hmm. 
but it would be super fucking dope to have that little communal living. We can still do that travel. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to have the money. Right. Well, I mean, if we bought the land, if we bought the land and everybody was doing tiny homes on it Mm -hmm. or building them out of Connex containers, you could build a home for under 10 grand. You just got to get a slab built. Okay. We'd Mm -hmm. have to get water ran or a well dug and then, you know, electricity ran to the property. Mm -hmm. But that would be easy to do. Well, there's some plots of land you were looking at that already had the water and electricity ran to it. Yeah. Yeah. That changes the price and that would get us probably down to like 20 or 30 acres. But that's still a lot of land. I don't think people realize 30 acres is a lot. Right. Yeah. For a few families to live on. It's, It's more than enough. Yeah. So the biggest thing would be finding a land that doesn't have super crazy steep elevation. And if it does, like it has areas that are flat so that it can be built on Mm -hmm. because otherwise it's it's just not a doable thing. But I I, I think about that Mm -hmm. and I think about, you know, if we fenced it all off, people like Dakota could do his dog training on the property. Like Mm -hmm. there, it would just be a very, a very Mm -hmm. dope thing. And for people who have kids that want to homeschool, you know what I mean? We could get Brandon and Jasmine up there and our kids could just homeschool and live on the property. Like we wouldn't have any real worries because we would own it. Right. So, and I wouldn't mind because homeschooling is three days out of the week. Right. But if you had, if you had six moms. Right. And we rotate teaching. Right. Or you just all do it together. Right. It would be, it would be a true, like, I don't. We could all specialize in something. Right. Oh, that would be the move. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get Amy out there. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she'd be close enough that she could come out and help and do shit, but yeah. I don't know. That's that's something that now I'm obsessing over, and it's not something I ever thought I would really want to do. But because um, I realize that I need community, yeah. And having the men's group does it, but it doesn't do it to the extent that I want to do it. All all of the men in my life that I love and respect are all in different states. Right. It's long distance broship. Yeah, and it it sucks because I can have the bro conversations that I need to have, but I can't do Mad Max shit. Right. And like we can do Mad Max shit, but you're dainty. So I can I can I, I have to do mini Mad Max shit with you. I'm very fragile. Yeah. <laughs> so like even yesterday riding up that hill on the quad, you're like, mm-hmm. I will wait here with the kids. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I was worried. I saw you stand up. Yeah. Like if I had to stand up with you, I don't believe my ankle is stable enough to keep me on that four wheeler and not yeah. hurt myself further. Yeah, I get that. I, I would know. be willing to do it though. Yeah. Like hundred percent, not even, I'd say like 85% healed. I'd, I'd be like, yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> we took the kids out. So for those of you who don't know, our kids have quads at four and five years old and they mm-hmm. ride them around our property. And we just had a track dug around the property and they're riding around the property. Um, and they're getting good enough now that they're learning how to overdo obstacles. And if a wheel comes up, they're not panicking and like they're navigating their four wheelers. Mm-hmm. And we went to a sand pit yesterday and got to do mud shit yeah. and they got to ride their quads through the mud for the first time. And it was, it was definitely an experience. And it, they actually had a lot more cause it's like what, 10 or 15 acres out there. Yeah. It's, it's massive. So they had this, like not just a one track or the yard, they actually had room to explore and get into ruts and go over grass and the sugar sand. And Did you see him do a donut yesterday? I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw him do that. I was like, yeah, little Mad Max shit. <laughs> There's a giant mud puddle out there and I was going to go through it yesterday and like ease into the puddle and gun it through so that we can like go through the mud puddle and I'm approaching and she's like, send that shit, babe, full send. I'm like, all right, (laughs) hit that shit full speed and we were drenched. I'm pretty sure I swallowed dirty, muddy Florida water. This is how Florida man happens. I'm going to get some kind of weird meth superpower now. Stop. Bath salts were in there or something. (laughs) I saw. So I'm riding passenger princess on this quad. And like, I'm all wrapped up against him and everything's like nice and warm. He's shielding me from the cold breeze and we're approaching the puddle. And I was like, I love puddles. So I was like, fucking send it, babe. And he, her, just vroom. And I saw, I saw the water splash up on the sides and I was like, oh, this is not bad. And then I saw it splash up onto the top of the hood and I was like, oh no, we're at like SeaWorld now. <laughs> and I, I, t- I closed my eyes and I put my head against your back because I didn't have my glasses on. I was like, I don't want this on my eyeballs. Right. And it's just instantly like freezing. I was like, oh, this is how they died on the Titanic. It's <laughs> terrible. It, the water was definitely colder than oh it should have been gosh. yesterday. We had a high yesterday of 65. So for Florida, that's... And I was in a tank that's, top. That's cold. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> By the time you guys hear this, this will be long over, but this is current things that are happening in our lives. Mm-hmm. For those of you who follow the podcast closely... Um, everybody knows Steve. Steve is currently in the hospital. Um, he's fighting a major infection. He's going to be out for a while. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, he goes into surgery today, so we've, we've been praying for Steve and hoping that, that all that comes out. Season 4, Episode 1, 2, and 3 of The Chosen is currently in theaters, and we have a date tonight to go oh, to I'm the so excited. theaters. For those of you who are watching this today, we are recording this on February 1st. Mm-hmm. This will drop in March at some point, so you guys are like a whole month behind at, at what we're doing. I think that we should drop some bonus content. Okay, like more recent stuff? Yeah, or? just to kind of fill in the gap. We've, we've done three bonus episodes this week for Patreon mm-hmm. on top of the garden segment. Uh, which I have to make sure is scheduled for tonight because I may not have scheduled that. Okay. It's a good episode. I'm pretty excited about it. Which one is it? The proper care and feeding of a husband part two. Okay. Yeah. I have to make sure that that's done. Let me message AJ right now. To While sure you do that, done. I'm going to plug the garden segment real quick. So if you guys aren't aware of the garden segment, it is a branch off of the podcast where I sit down and really dissect what it means to be a good woman, to be a good wife, to be a good mom. I am doing interviews, I'm doing book breakdowns, talking about things that I come across on the internet, life experiences, chit chat. It is not for everybody. It's not. (laughs) So if you are not interested in hearing about how to be a more traditional wife, to be a more uplifting wife, a peaceful wife, or just in general being a eloquent, graceful woman, You don't have to check it out. That's okay. But if you would like to check it out, it's on our Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Good plug. We, um, we are also, um, going to start doing, so look, I I know that we built this entire thing off of side pieces and emails and and R and R's and all the content that we do. That's been solely based off of emails. We have been trying to branch into interviews because it, the emails weigh on us, right? They it's get, a lot. It's they, very emotionally and mentally heavy. Right. And it, it drains us. Yeah. So we've been trying to supplement content for you guys in a mm-hmm. way that provides you something that we think you're going to enjoy while still giving you the emails. And I feel like maybe we went a little too hard on the interviews and we need to dial back on that so that we have more email content for you guys, which is why I want to start recording some bonus content to continue to get the emails out there because that's what people are listening for. So do you want to do interviews strictly as bonus content? Maybe, but that means we have to start doing two recordings a week on top of the interview. So like, I I don't know how I want to do that yet, but I do want to start implementing more emails to get more of what we're known for out there so that people who are watching us aren't, well, they're not doing emails anymore. This isn't why I followed them. Right. So I think that's a good call. We are going to be doing fun content though. Mm -hmm. Um, on the 28th, 24th, 24th, the 24th of this month, we're going to sit down and do a, a medicated conspiracy theories where Peaches, Sean, and Jacob are going to sit down and have a, a baked debate. <laughs> I'm so excited. And uh, there are six topics, uh, one arguing for, one arguing against, and one that has to be convinced. And I think we might do that as a live stream if I can get everything set up in there the way I need okay. to get it set up. So we All can right. do it at the, the war table which I think would be a lot of fun. So I feel like I want to get a business suit for this, but I also think stoned me is going to want to have my hoodie. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, I don't really have a whole lot more updates than that. Life is, is doing life stuff and we're just trying to get through it. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to just jump into some emails? Yeah, we can. This is a thank you update, I guess. Hi, guys. I'm not sure if you're still doing or reading the thank you emails, but I'd figure I'd send one anyway. Ta-da. Here we are. (laughs) I am a long-term listener of the podcast, and you read my original email on episode 14, the Pro Card Bodybuilder episode. Oh, I remember this. I remember that, too. Also, before I forget... Guys, when you email us, not rega- not not in regards to this email, the podcast is one year old. So if you are going to try to use verbiage to kind of get like sneak up a little bit more, like, oh, they were a very long time listener. Like, don't say you've been listening to us for years. Oh, yeah. We got a couple of those this week. <laughs> yeah. Been listening to you guys for years now. That's impossible. Crazy. <laughs> you psychic fuck. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You knew about this shit before we did. Are you looking for a job? (laughs) (laughs) Back into the email. Anyway, I told y'all in a super chat one day that I loved him. I sure as fuck did. (laughs) 
we sense rekindled things, and I'm going to explain why. Oh, I am just like full focus on this right now <laughs> because she even sent a super chat. Yeah. Okay. I watched the part of the YouTube video over and over and over again and picked apart every, point, every part of my own email and your responses to it. Although everything I said in my email was 100% true, it was also very one-sided. Yes, it is. And it took me until three months ago to realize it. I had been so caught up in how I wanted and needed things to be in our relationship that I never stopped, that I never stepped back to ask my partner for those things. And that's because I didn't know how to speak up and open my mouth. That has since been a skill that I've developed, and it's all thanks to you two in the Discord community. Love that shit. I am so here for this. So am I. <laughs> my partner and I live together again, and he has actually quit his job in car sales and now and is now self-employed flipping couches. It sounds weird, but it's a very lucrative business. I believe that. Yeah. I 100% believe that. Especially if he's going out there and getting really high-end couches, cleaning them up, delousing them and whatnot. Well, it's more than that, too. A lot of those guys will buy from factory warehouses that mm -hmm. are slightly damaged, do the repair, and then put it in a second-hand store. Oh, that's That's how smart. Sean buys all his couches. Really? Yeah, I've watched him buy six and $7,000 couches for like 2500 bucks. So if he's able to do it at that, you know that the people selling it is still making a profit. Right, definitely. So, yeah, there's, there's money in that. That's smart. Mm-hmm. You can really turn anything into a business. You just got to figure it out. There's always money to be made. Right. First thing that comes to my mind, if you're a painter, you can't get work, go to a fair and paint faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very different paint skill. You mean like an artist painter or like a painter house painter? And like an artist painter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I went to house painter. Oh, well, I was like, I don't know them. if I would want Mike painting my kids' faces. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes that massive roller and just one yeah. swipes. <laughs> Hit, hit him with the brave heart. There you go. You're <laughs> William Wallace. Be gone, kid. <laughs> I think he would be great at that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think Mike has an art background. Really? I, I do. I almost, I'm almost positive he said something about that at one point. But It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Back into the email. His moods, attitude, and actions towards me have drastically changed, and it turns out we both took the time apart to reflect on the previous stage of our relationship. This sounds like a honeymoon phase type situation when I type it out, but I assure you our relationship has evolved and more importantly matured. It doesn't sound like a honeymoon phase to me. It doesn't, no. It definitely sounds like there was learning lessons and realizations of this is the person I want to be with. We just need to figure it out. It sounds like they learned to communicate. Yeah. And that, that'll that change everything. Mm -hmm. It really will. And I get that feeling of evolution in the relationship. There's moments where I look at you, I'm like, did you feel that? And you're <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's a really dope feeling to know that not only are you on the same page, you're continuing to be on the same page. Right. And that takes effort. It does. It takes a lot of effort. There's some frustration involved. Sometimes. Yeah. We meal prep together, grocery shop together, and he touches my butt. Yeah, yeah, girl, I love that for you. <laughs> I love that for him, right? Like when, all when, around, it's just a win-win. Did you see that TikTok where it's a guy walks by his wife in the kitchen and takes two steps back and like, wow, yeah, and like as he first walks by, it's a bunch of actors' faces in disappointment. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes back and smacks it, it's a bunch of actors like in like raising the glass and like winking and giving <laughs> a nod like you did your ancestors proud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time you walk past your woman's butt without touching it, your ancestors cry a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want you to touch my butt more. <laughs> You need back pockets. I can just stick my hand in there. I have back these. Okay. These pants specifically do not have back pockets and the dresses that you like me and don't have back pockets. So we need to, we need to figure that out. You want to say something dirty? Oh, I fucking do. <laughs> then talk about a different pocket in your dresses. 
but we're not going to go there. Oh, yeah. The hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that from earlier episodes? I do. That's so funny. Are you editing this? Yes. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're so attractive to me. And you treat me so well. So, like, appearance is important, but it's not everything. Like, your your actions and the way that you treat me are, like, higher on my priority list of mate, right, of husband. Oh, man, he's looking at me still. And just the fact that you treat me like a, like a goddess and you look the way you do, fuck. <laughs> oh. feel like I won the Nobel Peace Prize or something. <laughs> uh. I heard a really cheesy pickup line. Yeah. And I've been holding on to it because I was going to get it on a video. But because of everything that you just said, I feel like now is a really appropriate time. I'm ready. If you're under 18, you don't want to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it said, you know that you're not supposed to touch fine art. Okay. But how else am I supposed to pin you to a wall? <laughs> by my throat <laughs> oh man or the hands above the head is acceptable too I just threw my apple pen um, D- pencil yeah <laughs> focus woman we still have to do the arm above the head thing oh I did that to her at, at the restaurant the other night <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember anything past what just happened. I need you to elaborate as I come back to. At what part? I don't know. I'm rendering. <laughs> <laughs> Insert dial up sounds. Yeah. That's funny. We went to dinner the other night. Yeah, with Jeff and Angie at Prime. Oh, yeah, that's right. They had you the did. piano playing. Really, really bad experience yeah. in terms of dinner. It was a great dinner like yeah. with friends, but yeah. the food sucked. The piano sucked. Drunk people at the restaurant sucked. It was just, I think I'm done with Prime. It's coming back to me now, yeah. But or, I, I like 90%. We were outside waiting and I did the arm above the head thing on the wall and yeah, you looked you up did. and went, ah. Yeah, I was sitting down too, so he was just towering over me with all that sexy. <laughs> he put that arm up and it was just male pheromone. <laughs> <sighs> we really need to get back into this email. We really need medics on site. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Having heart palpitations? Literally, yes. That's funny. Emailer, thank you for including that part about your your man touching your butt. Because it started that whole thing and now I'm having a great time. (laughs) (sighs) Look at y'all keeping the spark alive in us. (laughs) (laughs) So back into the email. Anyway, I'll stop going on and on. I just want to let you know. That it is not just new listeners that get valuable things from y'all. It is us long-term listeners, too. I'm just proof that it takes some of us longer than others, but accountability is hard. It is. Dude, I get that. (laughs) Chris looked at me the other day, and he was like, baby, you're acting crazy right now. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, no, stop. Like, you gave me permission for this. (laughs) Like, babe, you need to reel it in. And I was like, damn, you're right. And, like, he was smiling while he was doing it. And I was like, (sighs) I just want to be angry, <laughs> but I can't just be angry. I do have to be a sensible human being. We've had a couple instances over the last few weeks where people were like, I wish that our situation was like yours. Like even in terms of co-parenting. Really? Yeah. Well, our, our lawyer said it yesterday. Oh, yeah, he did. Um, He flat out was like, I would have fucking killed to have my wife's ex-husband be like you so that I can come over and have a drink and we could play chess. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I I think a lot of that does come down to accountability. Uh, I made a TikTok this morning that said, I believe there's two different types of people. There is the victim mentality and the curious. And I don't believe that you can be both. I believe that you Mm -hmm. can transition from one to the other, but you cannot live long term in both fields. Right. I mean, there is definitely that crossover. Right. Like transitioning, like one bleeds into the other, like an ombre, but you can't, right. can't live in that there. limbo. Yeah. yeah. And and what I mean by that is there are the people who are the why God, I can't, you know, I can't believe this happened to me or how, 
how could they do this to me when somebody does something, even if it's for their benefit and has nothing to do with you? That is a very pity me victim mentality. And then there's the curious people who are like, this shit happened and it sucks, but what can I learn from this situation to not experience this again? Because I don't want to experience this again. Mm -hmm. And this could be a, a multitude of things. If something causes you pain, you're like, hey, this sucks. How can I avoid this? That curious mindset is going to make you backtrack and pick apart all of your actions. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are hyper-focused on embarrassment or like, you know who you are when you lay in bed at night, think about some shit you said in seventh grade, even though you don't speak to any of those people anymore. And you're like, I can't fucking believe I said that. Mm -hmm. Right? Like those people are the ones who are very curious that want to like analyze and collect data and improve and grow and change. And I believe you can't be both of those. Right. Because if you stay in that victim pity me mindset, you don't care enough to try to analyze and pick apart unless unless you're doing it from a this just proves my thought process. I used to be somebody who was super self-conscious and always worried about embarrassing myself. Like I never wanted to be the butt of somebody's joke because I was so I was just one massive nerve that was raw. Nothing could be said or done to me that didn't make me feel like I was a fucking problem at this point in my life. And I was young like 17, 18, 19, like I was really young when this was a thing. Now, I don't care what other people deem as embarrassing. I'm having fun in my life. Right. I am fulfilled in my life. I am happy in my life. I will embarrass myself all damn day long and sing off key and karaoke as long as I'm laughing, having a good time and y'all are laughing. This says a lot about your mental health, but it says a lot about how you feel like in life, yeah. right? Because you're safe now. Mm -hmm. um, prime example of that is like, I do goofy shit with you that I would have never done with anyone else. You know, I was always very stoic and worried about the perception of those around me. Um, in the first gentleman video, I said your reputation matters above yeah. all things, right? Like you need to make sure that your reputation is is intact always because it affects your business and your family and like mm -hmm. i was very worried about how the outside world perceived me and that's changed right I, I will dance with you in fucking mcdonald's if elvis comes on the radio mm -hmm. like I, I don't give a shit about that anymore i don't care how others around me perceive me because i'm fulfilled and i'm happy and i know the people that love me aren't judging me in a negative manner there might be people out there that are like look at these fucking idiots yeah right. these idiots who are still in love you know what i mean like and that's and it's madly in love right and it's changed my perception on things so i absolutely think that that's a yeah. safety thing for us because we are very secure in what we have mm -hmm. i was going to change the subject uh and say that we have a family lawyer who we're close with it's mm -hmm. somebody that i've done business with for probably the last 7 years and um, he has agreed to come on the podcast a couple times and and actually sit down and like have family ask a lawyer kind of questions. And I think that we really need to to move forward with that. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I think that there's going to be so much valuable, priceless information from that episode and it's going to be free. Yeah. It's going to be so beneficial to so many people out there. Yeah. Do you think that reputation at one point was so important to you because... You did foul things in your past. You built a business and now your reputation would put your business in jeopardy. So like you were on top of making sure that you were you were good on things. Well, yeah, that was a huge part of it. Right. So like um, when it comes to your business's reputation, that's everything. Google reviews right. will destroy a business. Mm -hmm. um, I have watched businesses go out of business because they pissed off a community. It happens. Um, it's part of cancel culture. Unfortunately, that's the ugly side of things. Yeah. Um, so your reputation does matter in that mm -hmm. aspect. I wanted, so your reputation as a young man, um, especially growing up the way that I did was everything. Mm -hmm. Because once you got a reputation of a scrapper, you didn't have to fight as much. You know what I mean? If people, people just knew you. They knew, right. And if they didn't know, they were always testing you. So like that reputation of who I was then transitioned into who I was later in life. And who I am now, I don't I don't care about any of that. Like, right. it's not important to me because I'm not living on the street doing street shit. I'm running businesses and being a husband and, and a dad and like I'm doing life things in a, a more positive manner. So. OK, let's finish this email and I have a question for you. OK, you want to just ask the question because that's almost done, isn't it? OK, yeah. So <laughs> my question is now 20 year old, 20 year old you on the street, like in the game, doing the thing. Did it ever cross your mind that you would now be in your 40s, successful, happy with a family? No. 
Um, and I, I'm about to say something that I really, truly hate, and that's that I didn't expect to live this long, right? right. That's a very cliche thing. It's said on TV shows and in movies and music and everybody on the fucking internet. Like, that is a very overused sentiment. I didn't think somebody was going to, to take me off the planet. I thought I was going to take myself out way before now. Mm -hmm. um, so I had... Um, there was a very long time where I was just like, just all I need is that one push. That one push and I'm done. I'll have nothing left to lose and I'm just done. You know what I mean? Um, so 20-year-old me didn't think that I would make it to 40. Um, I knew that I was destined for things and I knew that if I really applied myself, I could make shit happen because I've always been that guy. Um, I've always been that, I'll show you, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, you tell me I can't do something and, and doubt me. So like, you, you've, you've given me fuel. But that's also a very toxic mindset. It'll work for a while, but eventually you're going to burn yourself out. And if you live in that mindset, you're not going to grow. Right. You are you have a very low ceiling at that point. So you have to evolve and change. And who I am now at 40 and who I was at 20, I think 20-year-old me would be very happy for who I am at 40 years old. But I don't think that there would be an understanding on how I got here. And I don't want to get into it anymore. No, I know. Bit. That's just crazy to think about. Yeah. Who you are changes consistently, especially right. when you're young. 15 to 25 is like a very pivotal point in your mm -hmm. life. It's going to establish a lot of your character traits and like the way you handle situations and navigate things, especially if that time frame is hard for you. Right. Which is why you see people who are in their late 20s, early 30s and 40s who are very trauma driven and they respond or react to situations in a negative manner from that trauma because they've never processed their shit and moved right. past it. Um, I did process my shit and move past it. I didn't have a choice because I didn't want to continue doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. If you have always done what you've always, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. Yeah. I don't want, I want to continue mm -hmm. to grow and be better and enjoy and, and, and experience new things. I don't want this to be a wasted life. Right. So, but the person I was in my teens, twenties, thirties, and forties are all different. Every one of those were a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think that's healthy. If you still have the mindset in your 20s that you had in your 20s, in your 40s, you're you're a loser. Oh, yeah. Because it's 20 years. That's two decades, almost a quarter of a century where you could have really evolved your way of thinking and become a different person. Right. So, I don't know. Oh, I was going to say something. What was it? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> I probably said that wrong. But no, that was right. Was it? That was correct, yeah. I'm watching... <laughs> Bojack Horseman again or listening to Bojack Horseman again as background music and background music as a background sound and one of the characters says super califragilistic super califragilistic expiala bitch <laughs> as an insult yeah. <laughs> I was like what a long road to get to that I'm kind of here for it though <laughs> like it's so petty yeah. that you're willing to put that much energy into it it's funny did that answer your question? Yes, that did answer okay. my question. Let's, let's jump back into the email, okay. finish the email off. We have a couple of really good emails today. Okay. So. I'm beyond grateful for this podcast more than I can ever express. And my boyfriend is too. Yes, he listens with me from time to time. I love that. Yay. If this happens to make it into a video, I just want everyone to know that if you want to be better, then do and be better. Accountability is hard. If you care more about your future than your ego, you'll recognize that your own toxic traits and destructive habits are holding you back more than anything or anyone else. Blaming others is great for the ego. Admitting that you need to work on yourself is great for your future. Yep. It's very well said. Ego is the destroyer of everything. Oh, yeah. You, you can't grow if you live in that mindset. Mm -hmm. I've watched it destroy artists. Musicians, Watch celebrities. Oh yeah, <clears throat> people who think that they have—they're just the hottest thing on the planet. They stop practicing. They stop trying. Mm -hmm. They feel like the world owes them something. Like it's just not a—I don't know. In the psychedelic world, mm -hmm. there's the kill your ego, destroy your ego, right? Ego death. That That's ego a very, death is wild. It, it is. It is. And once you've experienced that, it changes the way that you view the world. Mm -hmm. It changes the way that you view yourself, obviously, because your ego and your it are, are you. You know, your primal is your id and your ego is your current, but I don't know. I don't know. I think about that shit a lot. Every time I start mm. to get upset by something, I always go, is this my ego? Mm. Because if it's my ego, it changes the way that I'm feeling about things. Yeah. That that changes the, I can't believe this would happen to me versus, yo, they finally had an opportunity to level their life up good for them. Yeah. 
because it's not happening to me. My life and their life are two separate entities. And if they have the ability to open a business or go get a better job, it's not a fuck you to me. Right. They're doing what's best for them. Why should I take that as a personal thing? Mm -hmm. And a lot of business owners do. It's just the way it is. Friends will do it too. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, it's taken a lot for me to not take things personally. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Like now I ask myself, is this about me or is this about them? And they're just projecting it onto me. Mm -hmm. That also changes the way that you're able to root for somebody. Oh yeah. Right. Cause you can, you can absolutely root for people who are, who have done you dirty mm -hmm. because you feel personally attacked. And when you realize that it's not about you, that they are living their life and you are living yours, mm -hmm. you can root for them. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they may not have done things the wrong way. Things could have definitely been handled differently and you can feel how you feel about it. But when you realize that people are going to do what's best for them, you kind of just have to accept that that's just the way things go, that it's not always about you. Right. So I'm glad the emailer had a huge fucking life improvement. That's gangster. I'm glad that they were able to get back together and be healthy. Yep. Yeah, comes down to communication. This is also why we say that emails being one-sided is a problem. It is, yeah. If you guys are listening and want to have your emails read on the podcast, send an email to the, the number two, right? Mm -hmm. To be better co at gmail.com. Um, we are always looking to do a couple emails. So if you can both write in, your shit will get right pushed right to the front. There will be no wait. We will get to it on the very next episode. Um, those emails will always get priority because there's two sides to every story. And then the third side somewhere in the middle of that is the truth. For those of you who are in the state of Florida, if you would like to be on a live episode of the podcast, we are looking for influencers, creatives, things of that nature. If you're a small business owner, mm -hmm. um, send an email to me directly, Chris at to be better.com. Um, and if we can find a reason or a way to get you on the podcast for a live stream, I think moving forward on Sunday nights, we want to try to have a guest every week just so that we can have something other than our perspective. Because last night or last Sunday, we did one with Meg from uh, Meg underscore talks. Yeah. She used to be recover your power. And mm -hmm. on that podcast, we had a disagreement. We did. And that being able to walk, work through that disagreement in a healthy manner shows people that it's possible, but it mm -hmm. also allows other people to get their perspectives in and shows right. that like you can find a middle ground. And, and we, we agreed with each other's viewpoints. Yeah. We were like, yeah, I can see why that would be your point of view on that. That makes sense. Yep. Crazy to me that people j can't just have conversations. Right. Like even a disagreement, that's just a conversation for me. It's crazy to me how quick people are to throw shade and, and call each other names. And like mm. we, I posted that thing about Texas on TikTok and on YouTube as a short. And um, the one that I posted about Texas on TikTok, I had to remove it. I had to make it private because I was getting, I was being called a right-wing extremist. I was being called a Biden supporter on the same fucking post, which means obviously I'm neutral. If you guys are, are taking what I'm taking that way, I was getting a lot of people going, I can't believe you don't support Texas. And none of that video had anything to do with that. I was, I was genuinely curious about things and trying to create a dialogue. And instead of getting that back and forth in the comments, I was just getting fucking tons of hate from it. I don't think that intellectually they have the capacity to have the dialogue you were looking for. Yeah. I mean, maybe not. It's easier to throw shade and, and create conflict than it is to have a discussion. I don't, I don't have any stake in the game. Yeah. I don't live in Texas. And like, regardless of how I feel about immigration, what's happening in Texas is happening in Texas. Right. So like, why can't we have a, an open discussion about what's going on? Because if we can't talk about it, how are we going to ever come to an agreement? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to ever actually fix the problem? Right. So, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of, um, there's a guy on YouTube, and I can't think of his name, but he's got like two, two and a half million followers. And all he does is travels the United States and meets with people and goes on like tours of towns and sheriff's offices and all of this shit. And like, he's done like the poorest Appalachian town He's done the, the border. He's done Navajo land. He's done all kinds of really cool uh, content. He did one for like Florida man, which is how I found about uh, found out about um, river ranch acres, okay. which is something that we were looking into. Um, but he's got a lot of really good content and he's very neutral. Mm -hmm. He just asks questions to like kind of have discussions and see what's going on. And that like um, natural level of curiosity fucking does it for me because I want to know everything. Mm -hmm. I, I am the why guy. Why is that the case? How come? Why are you doing that? Like, why do you view it that way? I want to know. And though I am very opinionated, 
I, my opinions can change. I'm very good about changing my thought process. If something makes sense to me, right? I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to ever say, stay, uh, steadfast in something that's now been broken Mm -hmm. and my, that doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it anyways. You know what I mean? Like, I know. Well, (laughs) yeah, you're right. That's ego wanting to stay in a place that's been disproven or has been broken just because you don't want to be wrong is ego. Yeah. I'd rather be wrong than look like an idiot. I would. Yeah. Cause I don't think if you were like, no, you're right. You're right about that. I don't think that makes you an idiot, Mm -hmm. but if you continue to argue your point, even though your point has now been proven wrong, you are an idiot. Yeah. So next email. Yes. Toxic boyfriend or am I crazy? Is this the one that was, that I asked for? Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't know you asked for one. It was the one that was in the medium priority folder. Okay. What is it called? How, how to talk about is the one I want. Let's do the, the that one and then we'll do the how okay. to talk about. Because that one sounds like it's going to be a, a ride. Okay. I got with my boyfriend December 16th of 2022, but we did all the stuff that would make us a couple months before that. What does that mean? Yeah, because that looks different for everybody. Right. This falls into the, I know them. Yes. Well, how do you know them? Because... You know, you guys could have went to school together in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you know them. It means you knew them, right? So you know like, of them. Right. So what did you, couple, you mean you fucked? Right. Because that's not couple stuff. Or were you guys like... Dating, sharing milkshakes with, you know, right. two straws in one cup kind of thing. Like yeah. <laughs> My mind went to like, he's in the hospital and you're sitting next to his bed. Damn. Like, I don't know, that's just where my mind went to. Couple shit. Yeah, so you guys need to be more clear when you say shit like that. (laughs) Details matter. You helping him move? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, you know you got a friend if they help you move. Right. Right, nobody wants to do that shit. I'll pay you for your movers. Don't expect me to pick anything up. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be that guy that shows up with pizza and bourbon and we can watch other people carry your shit. (laughs) Around the time that he asked me to be his girlfriend in December, I met his friend R. And he brought up my boyfriend's ex, C. Okay, nothing is capitalized here, so I'm trying my best. Okay. My boyfriend got mad at R. Okay, I'm making up names because I can't do this. I met his friend, um, Robert. And he brought up my boyfriend's ex, Kelsey. My boyfriend got mad at Robert for bringing her up, and I got suspicious of that, so I asked him questions. Normal, in all caps, questions. He avoided them with, why are we even talking about this? It's not relevant. There's a whole lot of questions there. Right. Like what, well, what were you asking? What's normal? Right. I was about to say, because there is no defined normal. Details, guys. We need details. I would really need details on that. Were you asking him like. Who's this bitch? Or (laughs) when did you guys break up? Right. I don't, I don't really remember the day. You remember the fucking day. You just want to see if you're going to catch him lying in this moment because you're already suspicious. Or were you really happy with her? Those kinds of, like, I don't know, like. You guys should always ask your person about their ex. You really should, yeah. Always. Pro dating tip. Pro courting tip. Mm, courting, yes. If you meet somebody and you're having conversations about their ex and they're throwing all of the shade on their ex, they did this, they did that. It was their fault. They treated me like run they were a big part of the problem what was that that tiktok sound run yeah (laughs) yeah that's that's how that goes that's a red flag that's a huge fucking red flag it means that in the event that things go wrong you're going to be the problem in this relationship whether you are the problem or not yeah because there's no growth there's no accountability there was no inflection there or reflection there of Mm -hmm. what they could have done differently From personal experience, I would also put money on the fact that if they are so willing to openly shit on an ex to a new person person they're courting, they did that to everybody in their family, all of their Mm -hmm. friends. So trying to paint themselves in a good light. Your guys' business will not be just your guys' business. It's going to be Aunt Sue's business. Nana's going to know about it. Your third, her third cousin, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also want to touch on, so he said, why are we even talking about this? It's not relevant. So we talked about our exes before we got together Mm -hmm. and there was a lot of accountability taken on both of our ends. And we talked about things that may have traumatized us or mistakes that we made, but it never went beyond that. Right. 
there was no shit talking. There was no, oh, I can't believe they fucking did this to me. Like that wasn't a thing. Right. Because it doesn't, it doesn't solve anything. Right. You can't change somebody and you're not responsible for their actions. Right. So if her questions are trying to lead him to shit talking the ex to make her feel better about herself, those are not relevant questions. Right. It's also not healthy. Right. Very good point. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Mm -hmm. I like it when you look at me. Do your fucking job, woman. Mm. <laughs> Man, the amount of trigger that's coming out for people who've never watched this podcast right now. I can't believe he just talked to her like that and he called her woman. You're so hot right now. <laughs> they can get spicy about it. Back into the email. Mind you. Oh, did I say Kelsey? Yes. Okay. Mind you. Him and Kelsey were together for two years. Later, I found out she was his first real relationship, and he got with me not even four months after they broke up. He also saw her in September of 2022, a month before me and B met each other. B and I. But, yeah. uh, so what? Yeah, none of that's relevant. The So the soul, the attachment, will always leave before the physical being will. Yeah. I agree with that. There are people who have been in a relationship for 10 years going, I should have left four years ago. But they're there because maybe there's children involved. If they leave, the person's going to take half of their shit. They might be homeless. I can't tell you how many TikToks I'm seeing of men going, my wife divorced me. She got everything and now I'm homeless. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen quite a few where people are living in their car because the alimony and child support is is too much. Right. But on the same, same, uh, the opposite side of the coin of mm -hmm. that, there are women out there who are not able to make ends meet. And there are women out there who are now dealing with three or four kids and the man is no longer in the picture at all. And they have zero help. Like right. this, this is people stay together out of necessity a lot. Yeah. If I leave, who's going to help me take care of the kids? I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. I don't want to take them away from their father. You know, I don't want to not be a present father. And I know if she leaves, that's going to happen. Right? right. There's a whole lot that goes into that. You know, when you think about it, humans have been around for a very long time. Right. Taking religion out of it. There are bones that have been carbon dated to 300,000 years ago. That's a long fucking time. Back then, birth was not always guaranteed. Survival during birth for the mother was not always guaranteed. Marriage, relationships, families were not based in love. They were based in necessity because right. if we are not living together as a community, we're going to fucking die. You know that they found a hammer that was more than a million years old in carbon dating? No way. Yeah, it was on Ancient Aliens the other night. They had the picture of the hammer and everything. Like, it's it's literally just a stick through a fucking piece of metal. That just gave me goosebumps. Um, I You know, while you were talking just now, I also had a thought. You know that when people lived in clans and tribes and small communities like that, if there was a divorce, the kids mm -hmm. were still a part of that community. Oh, yeah. Because that tribe was an, uh, one. Mm -hmm. You traveled together. You you know, your your camps moved together. You hunted together. So, like, in the event that shit didn't work, everybody was still communal. Right. The parents just weren't fucking anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, it also speaks to the differences of marriage. Because a lot of those those cultures believe that marriage was a soul bond. Yeah. This life and the next. That's wild. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about because now it's so easy to just separate, live in the same town and never see your kids again. Right. Anything that happened before you and B, let's call him Bailey. Before you and Bailey met, doesn't matter. Now... If he saw her three months after you guys officially became committed to each other, I could see how that's a problem. Define saw her. Say that she flew into town. This is all hypothetical. She flew into town. He did not tell the girlfriend, hey, she's coming in and I'm going to go meet her. And then they go somewhere for three or four hours during that day. Right. And he's saying, I'm out with the boys. That's, an ex that's a very extreme saw her, though. Right. Maybe they just hung out for a night. And I'm not even like, you know, just maybe they bumped into each other at a bar and, and had a couple of drinks and mm -hmm. he saw her at the bar or they were at the gas station getting gas. And he was like, hey, what's up? And she's like, oh, hey, how's life? Because that's the definition of saw her. Yeah. 
This is the details that we need. These mm-hmm. emails don't do us any good if you guys don't get fucking descriptive with what's happening. Right. We can hypothetical shit this all day long, but none of it's relevant. And yeah. we're not going to be able to help you if you're not clear on what's going on. So just based on that, just the information that was written, I'm going to read it one more time. Mind you, him and Kelsey were together for two years. Later, I found out that she was his first real relationship. And he also got with me not even four months after they broke up. But he also saw her in September of 2022, a month before me and B met each other. So just based on that, none of that information matters to me. Nope, not even a little bit. Okay, moving on. I mean, we do need to know that he had a previous girlfriend, obviously, because that's relevant. But Well, she said, mind you, like this is yeah. going to be a big ticket thing. Right. It's not. It's not. Even if they fucked, it doesn't matter because you weren't in the picture yet. Right. He didn't even know you existed. So right after New Year's, maybe two to three days, he tells me that she contacted him and said stuff about how he got a new girlfriend and that I'm so pretty and all. I asked him to let me read it. He said he deleted it and that he didn't want it on his phone. I don't believe that. Okay, elaborate. Because I have a different thought process. Go ahead. Because I'm not going to forget this. Okay. So him deleting it and then telling her that she texted... I, I, I see the innocence in things because I don't do anything out of malice. So in seeing that, if he is having like issues with the ex or if she's trying to manipulate him to get her get, to get him to talk to her, to have a conversation just because she wants his attention out of sight, out of mind. I don't see why telling the person, hey, my ex messaged me and said you were so pretty and all of these kinds of things. I don't want to deal with her. I just deleted the message. But just so you know, she reached out to me and this is this is what I did to take care of that situation. I don't see why that would be a nefarious intention. Him deleting the text message doesn't take care of that situation. Taking care of that situation was, hey, you just overcrossed a boundary. Don't talk to me anymore. Right. That's but taking care of the situation. A strong willed person would do that. Do you, do you delete text messages? Do you better yet? Yeah. Do you go back through text messages later and reread old conversations? No, that I do not do. But I do go through and I delete messages like for my text messages. because I get a lot of spams from like DoorDash and Instacart and. Right. But why delete it? Because I don't want it clogging up my messages. It's dysfunction for my eyes. It's hard for me to look for what I'm looking for. OK. Well, then we're very different. Really? I don't you do don't do that? Fuck no. I have so much other shit going on in my life. The last thing I'm worried about is a message on my phone from eight months ago. That's all the way down on the bottom of something that I would have to scroll to because I'm not scrolling. Hmm. I, I I know who I need to talk to. They're in the top five messages because I talk to them every day. Yeah. I have text messages from roofers from a year ago. I don't give a fuck about any of that. It, it's out of sight, out of mind. That's I'm not, making my skin crawl. <laughs> That's I, crazy. I will clear notifications. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Because the little red bubbles drive me fucking nuts. But yeah. like, I don't, I don't give a shit about any of that. It's clutter. I'm also <laughs> not one of those people that's going to go to a concert and record the concert so I can watch it later. Because yeah, I'm not going to fucking that. watch it later. Right. And I screenshot tons of shit mm-hmm. and then have to go and delete 8,000 pictures later because none of it's relevant to my life right now. I screenshotted it because I needed it for something. And then I, I can't remember why I need it. So. So why do you delete pictures? Because pictures take up a whole lot of space. Text messages don't. Oh, so I have, I don't clear out my photos. I, I have like 10,000 pictures. Yeah, I don't. I have, well, okay. So that's a different thing because I do go through my pictures. Yeah. Like if I want to look for the now hiring at sacred rights tattoo thing, I have mm-hmm. to dig for that. And if I have 10,000 pictures and I'm scrolling trying to find that picture, that's a problem. And I have gone through and favorited things that I need so that I don't have to go and look for that, like Wi-Fi passwords and shit. Mm-hmm. But there's like 45 screenshots of my, my, controller for my electric bike on my phone right now and i can't delete any of those because i'm i'm working on programming that to perfection and i need those right and once i have it perfect i'll screenshot the one that i i know works for that bike Mm -hmm. hard it so that it's favorited and then i'll delete all of them because i don't need all of that but i also have a one terabyte phone Mm -hmm. and i have apple cloud which it was full i had to delete all of that because of the tiktok downloads wow (gasps) excuse me so there's um, I guess it's just a very different thing. I need to get to certain pictures, so I will clear out my pictures. But if I didn't go back and need those things, like if I didn't have a business where I needed that, mm-hmm. I would never delete any of that shit. And and if I absolutely needed to, I would wipe my phone and then get a new one and just have a brand new clean slate because I deleted all the shit mm-hmm. off of it. I don't, I don't know. 
I don't put that much stock into the device. Yeah. So I guess it's two different perspectives. We just yeah. aren't going to see the same in that. No, I mean, like your perspective makes sense. I, I have a lot going on in my messages. Like I'm talking with teachers and doctors and like confirming appointments and whatnot. So I don't want to have DoorDash and Instacart clogging that up because it's my visual reminders of things, you know? Yeah, I don't have DoorDash and Instacart text messaging me. That's how I know shit's arriving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the app doesn't notify you? I turned off app notifications. Oh. I get a lot of spam. Yeah. A lot. Like a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. So I guess to elaborate further, I am somebody who will go through and like, I'm still a damaged person. So if I read something and it's from somebody that I care about, I will 100% delete that message thread because I will go back and dissect everything on how, what I did wrong, even if I'm not in the wrong. And I will torture myself with it. So for my own peace of mind, I have to go through and delete messages like that. I'm not, I don't know what his purpose was from my perspective, another perspective of things. Me personally, that's, that is why I do things like that. Hmm. Yeah. I don't see it that way. So elaborate. I do. I just did. I, I just don't oh. see it that way. I don't give a shit about any of that. Okay. So I don't delete things. So for me to, to, so my original thought when I was like, people don't do that. I, I look at that as him trying to hide something really because I don't do that. I have, I don't, why would I delete messages? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like it, that text message is kilobytes. Right. I have a terabyte phone and I I get a new phone every year. As soon as the iPhone drops, I go get a new one Mm -hmm. because I don't want the battery issues and like the, the bullshit that Apple does to start affecting my phone. Right. So I, I don't, I just don't give a shit about any of that. So when I hear people deleting messages and shit, it just seems shady to me because in my brain, that doesn't make sense. I guess maybe that's a me thing. And because if I was... Going through and, and doing that, would it clear my phone up? Absolutely, but mm-hmm. it's not going to better my life. I also organize all my apps on my phone and like I have don't do that. widgets displayed of things that are pertinent to my days. And I have things joined by folder, so like finances, games, oh. but otherwise like after page two, there's just apps everywhere. Oh, that's stresses and me out. I don't, I don't look for them. <laughs> right. I pull the thing down and search for the app I want. I'm not digging through all that shit. Right. There shouldn't be apps mm-hmm. like that. Like you shouldn't need an app for Pizza Hut, Domino's and Papa John's to order a fucking pizza. Mm-hmm. You should be able to just get on, on your browser and order the pizza and them not force you to download an app. So like, I don't, I don't use those things. Yeah. I have. You also don't handle food, so. No, but I still have food apps on my phone mm. from when I did have to do that because, you know, it just carries over from phone to phone to phone. Um, but I also have a lot of finance. Like my finance folder is probably my biggest one because I've got crypto things in there and wallets and Business I don't know. Shit, yeah. yeah, it's just, I guess that just goes to show that we are two very different people when it comes to our phone organization because I don't give a shit about my phone at all. Mm-hmm. So that's two perspectives on that. Yep. Back into the email. I got paranoid and was overthinking it, or so I thought. After that, I went through his TikTok followers and found out that him and his ex were mutuals. This is important later. So what? I'm willing to bet they're young as fuck. Yeah, there's a lot of insecurity here. A lot of insecurity here. So a few months pass of us arguing over her, and then the arguments stop. I think life's great, yada, yada, yada. And last month came and I had a random gut feeling that he was doing stuff on his phone. So I went through it and found ass pics of girls from when he and Kelsey were together. Which has nothing to do with you. So I got pissed and told him told him to get off my couch and leave. I hope he did because you're super insecure and you're mad at him for something that has nothing to do with you. I fucking hope he left. What gives you the right to go through somebody's phone? Some people have open phone policies. Right. If that's not a thing, though, like it's not an established thing. I used to go through an ex's phone. I did it with one person and I broke my own heart doing it. If you have a gut feeling, you already don't trust the person you need to leave. That's the answer. If the trust is not there, it's already done. Right. All you're going to do is go through the phone. Even if you don't find what you think you're going to find, you're going to find something else that hurts your feelings. Right. And she did. And, and it she had did. nothing to fucking do with her. Yeah. At all. Yeah. So if that these, is fucking insane. Yeah. Do you hear that? Like, right. I went through it and found ass pics of girls from when he and Kelsey were together. So that was over two years ago. 
If these were not recently saved, which you can no, look no, at the that data. No, was, that was four months ago because... No, she said they've been together for they two were, years. They were, he was with Kelsey for two years and they, he was without her for four when they got together. Right. I got with my boyfriend of 2022 in 2022. Okay. So it's going on two years they've been together. Okay. But they were, okay. So there was a four month time frame between the two of them. Right. From okay. him leaving his ex to getting with the current. So she's getting mad at something that happened four years ago. Right. Even if they were old pictures, if you and I were like looking at your phone for pictures on something. And I found photos from seven years ago of a naked chick that you used to be with. Hey, babe, can you delete that? Right. That's it. Oh, I totally forgot that that was even there. The things that people put stock in blows my mind. Just ask them to delete the photos. If they were recently downloaded within the last two months, that's a fucking problem. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a problem because he's looking at other women lustfully. Right. I also want to go back to so a few months pass of us arguing over her and then the arguments stop they didn't stop he just stopped arguing with you over it or they could have stopped talking right because yeah. what she found had nothing to do with the ex right <laughs> oh man do you remember when we got emails that were like hey i got into an argument with my old man last night mm -hmm. this is what he said this is what i said how could i have handled that differently yeah now we're getting emails like I'm mad at my boyfriend because of something that happened when we weren't together. I'm mad that he has a past. Yeah. Oh, how dare you have a past? This is the same argument that men make about women with body counts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Back into the email. After that, I followed his ex on Instagram and showed her what I found. And let me tell you, this girl showed me everything. She sent me screenshots of what she texted and what he texted on New Year's. He offered to get her because she was drunk. Then he said he wanted to take it to TikTok because he thought he was being set up. Then they called and he told her everything and told her that he loved her. She could be making up all of that. The, the text messages. I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't believe anything on the fucking Internet. Anything can be doctored. Anything can be faked. Right. Say the text messages are real. That phone call could be completely fabricated because that's a he said, she said. Yep. There, there are women out there who bank on the fact that your foundation's already broken and they're just waiting for their time to slip in and take your man. Right. Or she could still be in love with the guy and trying to get him back. Yeah. It could be a lot of things. The text message said she got drunk on New Year's and he offered to come get her. Right. If anybody from my past, love or hate, messaged mm -hmm. me and was like, look, I'm fucking trashed and no one will help me. Will you help me? I'm helping you. I am. Because mm -hmm. if I say no and you slam into a family of five coming home from church on a Sunday night and kill all of them, I'm fucking responsible for that. Right. I'm good on that. Yeah. I would rather be the bigger person for an hour and deal with somebody that I can't fucking stand to make sure that the world is safe. Right. And I'm going with you. Yeah. And that's the insecurity in me. If one of your exes called you and was like, I'm drunk, no one's going to help me. I need a ride. And you're going, I'm fucking going with, I'm not talking you out of it. Right. I'm not going to stop you from being the man that you are because I'm insecure with myself, but you best believe I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning putting on my Snuggie and I'm coming with you. That's crazy. It, it is. The email is just insane to me. It, if, the, the, it, okay. if he still loved her and he told her that mm -hmm. and he's with you and he's still in love with her, that's a problem. Right. Right. He needs to sever ties if that's the case, because there's infidelity that's going to happen there. Correct. That's super inappropriate. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. But the rest of that, I, I, I don't see a problem with somebody giving somebody a ride when they're drunk. Right. The reaching out to the ex is a problem for me. Like, what is the point of that? That's just middle school drama shit for me. You already know <laughs> that you can't trust him. You are already finding things that are making you mad in this relationship. What is reaching out to the ex going to do besides piss you off even more? Leave already. Yeah. All of this is absolutely unnecessary. Here, here's another thought. In the event that him and that the ex were actually doing back and forth shit, the ex knows who you are and knows you exist. So while while all of this foul shit's happening and he's a part of it, you're now reaching out to her trying to be buddy-buddy. She did you just as dirty as he did. Yeah. Yep. Back into the email. I confronted him when I found out and he got mad and told me we were done. And then he owned up to it all after an hour of me telling him that we can break up after I get the truth from him. Wow, that's a pretty fucking bold statement. Holy shit. I'm talking about control. That's insane to me. To think that you're just going to demand something like right. that? Right. 
you're not allowed to leave until I say you're allowed to leave. You can't make a move. You can't fucking breathe unless I say you can breathe. That's you held that man hostage. I would lie to your ass too to get out of that. <laughs> like if that's the case, hypothetical, like I am not going to sit here and argue with you. If all I have to do is own up to something that I didn't do and I get to leave. Okay. Yeah. It's crazy to me to hear all of this. Me too. So say he is doing all of those things. He did all of that. He told the ex that he loves her after an hour of you holding him hostage he fesses up to all of it and he admits that it's the truth and it is the truth. That is what happens. Did it change anything for you? Right. Like what, what you're it, still breaking up either way. Right. So what's the point in all of that? Right. Why not just go, I don't trust you. This isn't working. Have a nice life. So he owned up to it after an hour of me telling him that we can't break up until after I get the truth from him. I'm still with him and things seem like they haven't gotten better at all. How did this get into this folder? This is the medium folder. There's an update on here. Let's go to the update. Because okay. I'm, I'm super annoyed by all this. This is an update from January 28th. Okay. We broke up in July of last year, and now we're back together as of November. He got his act together, but I think the break was worth it. He got his act together. Girl, what about you? Right. Oh, wow. He is not, he, he is not the only problem in this equation. I'm absolutely flabbergasted right now. I think the break was worth it. But during that time, he went back to his ex, Kelsey. I'm still overthinking about her. It seems like she's always there. We broke up because he was lazy, didn't want to take care of himself, and didn't want to clean. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't want to read this anymore. Okay, let's move on to a different one then. There's a whole lot of projection there. And a whole lot of he's the problem and zero accountability on her part. This is why I want people to send emails in together. This is also why I don't want to take emails from young people. Right. This is we, also not the truth. Yeah. No, it's not even close. You, you know, in the beginning of this, we said we weren't going to read emails from people under like 25. Do you remember that? Did we say that? We did. We said it a few times and we went back on it because there are young people out there who actually need help. She needs help. She's just not going to get it from us because of what's going on. Like, this is not a, a simple solution email. That It's so one-sided. Right. Your whole first email was about the ex-girlfriend and how he was cheating on you. That's how I felt like she was laying that right. out. And he wasn't. And he wasn't. Did he do things if they are the truth that are fucked up? Yes. I would be absolutely livid if I found out while we were together, you called your ex and said, I still love you. Yeah. Lose my fucking mind over that. To say in your update, though, that we broke up because he was lazy, then what the fuck was the purpose of the first email? Right. She's trying to paint him in a negative light, so we'll take her side. I'm very agitated right now. And I can tell I'm agitated because I'm cussing a lot. There is a lot of immaturity in that email from that emailer. Your shit stinks, too. Yep. I would really reevaluate the way that you were handling things. If the ex was an issue and you know he was with the ex while you guys were separated, why would you get back with him knowing that they got back together when you guys weren't a thing? Right. You are doing this to yourself at this point. You are making the choices that are putting yourself in the cycle. You need to move on from this man. I meant you something different. What? The fact that he was with the ex while they were not together is none of her fucking business. They weren't together. You let him go. Or he let you go. Mm -hmm. So what he does in between the time of you guys breaking up and you guys getting back together is none of your fucking business. I don't care if he fucked a hundred women. It's none of your business. You can ask him about his body count and he can be honest with you if that's what he feels he can do. Mm -hmm. if, if, if he feels like he can be honest with you without you being crazy and controlling. Yeah. But that's none uh, of your business. Right. I mean, if... She cannot be controlling. There is already that exude of control there, though. You're not allowed to leave until you admit to me yeah. what I believe the truth is. <clears throat> yeah, my answer to that been like, you're right. It's all true. Everything you've ever heard. Everything. Even things that, that you can think of and make up on your head. I did that, too. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Bye, Felicia. Yeah. Next email. Okay. Newlyweds, long distance, military, and mental health. Okay. Okay. Hi. I've been watching you two on TikTok for a while and recently started listening to the podcast. 
I'm not sure if you can offer advice or if there's a podcast episode that might help, but I wanted to share my concerns and seek advice. My husband and I have been together for three years, married for one and a half. He considers our marriage traditional as he works and pays all the bills while I stay at home taking care of our baby. However, I'm facing several issues. He engages in virtual cheating, creating fake Snapchats for explicit content, claiming it's how things were in the olden days and justifies it because he pays the bills. Uh, Snapchat didn't exist in the olden days. So there's that. Everybody dictates the standard in their relationship and their boundaries. My husband and I agree that even looking at another human being lustfully is a form of cheating. This is something that I would not accept. This would be a very in-depth discussion and there will be multiple avenues of solution. And it all depends on how my husband would like to take it. Elaborate on that. So if I came to you and I was like, babe, when we got married, we both agreed that this was not going to be a thing that we're doing. And now you're doing it and you're justifying it by saying that because you make the money to pay the bills, I'm shit out of luck. I'm not, I'm not okay with this. You are going back on your vow and your word to me. We need to figure out, we need to figure this out. And that would be whether you delete all of the apps off of your phone We do parental controls. I get an app where I can see what you're doing on your phone. Or if you don't want to give any of it up and want to continue living your life that way, then this might not be for us. This, um, in the title, it said long distance. Correct. Because of the military. Right. So he's alone Mm -hmm. and lonely. Yep. And he's filling a need within himself and he's doing it with somebody other than his wife. Right. So what does that say about the relationship? Is he not attracted to her anymore? Does she not flirt and keep that intimacy alive? Right. Is it not worth trying because, well, you know, we have a kid and I didn't do my hair today and I don't have makeup on and I'm not feeling sexy, so I'm not going to send you a photo. Like, there's a whole lot of other side of this story. Y'all could be FaceTiming. We could be doing a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of things. No, like FaceTiming with a hey. Yeah. I still get dirty pictures from you while I'm in the, in the same house. Yeah, you do. You'll be sitting at your computer working. So the intimacy can be kept alive. And if, mm-hmm. if you, those needs are not being met, I, I really truly believe that when a man finds a woman that checks all the boxes and does all the things that keeps him completely enamored, he's not going to do those other things. There are men out there who believe it's okay to cheat, right? There are men out there who will tell a woman straight out, I will marry you and I will love you unconditionally and make sure you have everything that you need in life. Just know I'm going to fuck other women. And there are women out there who'd be like, okay. Mm -hmm. And those two will work out real well because the sex won't mean anything to him. They will be fulfilling each other and all of the other intimacy. And that's their understanding of what their life is. We are not about that. Mm -hmm. That is the understanding of our our marriage. So that comes down to a choice. Mm -hmm. Just like the letting the intimacy die. One of our nephews is texting me. And he sent me a video of a jar that's kind of like a lava lamp that he made. I was like, oh, dude, how'd you make that? <laughs> and he's sending me all the ingredients. And he's like, oh, yeah, and vegetable oil. And I was like, oh, I have vegetable oil. <laughs> Not me taking tips from like a nine-year-old on how to build a homemade lava lamp. And I'm actually excited about it. That's funny. Before he went overseas, I wasn't allowed to do single activities like going out with friends. He, on the other hand, could go to bars, talk to anyone, and return home whenever he pleased. So you didn't establish boundaries on your end, only on his. Got it. Was this also before marriage? Does that matter? I think it does. Why? Because if this was a set thing before you guys got married, why would you say yes to that proposal? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I was still hung up on the the boundaries aspect of it because I I would have set those boundaries in the beginning. Well, if I can't go to the bar, why are you? Yeah. Oh, you're going to go anyways? That's not, I'm not living like this. Yeah. Right? Those boundaries need to be set. A hundred percent. He watches corn or OnlyFans daily, citing dissatisfaction with our sex life. So he's telling you what the problem is. Yeah. But there's definitely an addiction there. However, I find it challenging to connect emotionally when discussing my feelings. When discussing my feelings leads to arguments. Okay, so how do you discuss your feelings? How did it go from her not taking care of his needs sexually to her feelings? Because so for women, sex is like directly linked to emotion. No, I, I get that. 
So if she doesn't feel like she can safely talk about her emotions to her husband, even if it's the way that she's communicating it and she's starting the arguments, she does not feel that romantic connection that leads to the want of the sexual desire. Okay, so how does that get fixed? Because he's telling her what the problem is. Right. And he's leaving it up to her to fix it. And because she can't fix it, she's getting mad that he's seeking out external validation or whatever you want to call that. Right. Um, so the problem is their communication. Either she's delivering her feelings in a very attacking way where he feels he needs to defend himself or he is on the defense no matter what due to unresolved things from his end. So either way, it's the communication breakdown. I don't know what the solution is. She didn't include any examples of how she conveys her feelings. Are you processing? Um, I'm going to say some things that's going to get us hate. Okay. Um, so what I was going to say, and it's going to get us hate on the internet, is that you have stated over and over and over again that if I wanted sex, you were going to put out. Oh, correct. Because it's your wifely duty to make sure that my needs are being met. It's also not a chore for me. Right. But okay. So in that situation where I was like, hey, we have a very strong dom sub relationship, mm -hmm. right? And that does not tie into our traditional relationship. That's something that is kind of like a sub sect. Um, in the event that I am not satisfied, right? Let's say that we have fallen out of the dom sub thing mm -hmm. and there are not needs being met within me. And I came to you and you're like, well, I don't feel emotionally safe. How does that get resolved? Because I have needs not being met and you have not needs not being met. Right. But your needs not being met is what's causing my needs not to be met. Right. So how does that discussion happen? Because. Okay. I'm going to have to like really, really think on this for a second. Because this is like, I'm going to treat this like a real life scenario. So this would be my answer. Not in fight or flight. Like if I'm, if I'm fucking going through it and I'm a mess, that's not the conversation to be having right then. Logical me, we're just sitting on the couch, we're watching something and you look at me one night and say, hey, I've noticed X, Y, and Z is going on. My needs aren't being met. Like, where are you at right now? Because I don't believe you would be shitty about it. No. And I would probably acknowledge, yeah, things have changed. I would let you know that it also sucks for me. Because I would hate not having the desire that I have for you. Like that would be a, something seriously wrong with us. So I would let you know that it also bothers me and I'm going through it because of it. And then I would try my best to elaborate on what the disconnect is for me. Because it's not a you problem. There's a disconnect from my emotions to my sexual attraction or desire. But also knowing me, I would have a map ready for this. Like I would have already connected the dots on things. I might still be hung up on something and that's why I haven't brought the conversation to you. I would say something along the lines of, I've noticed that I don't feel heard in our conversations when I come to you about my feelings. I notice that one of us becomes elevated. It seems like there is a misunderstanding and I'm trying to figure out if I am the reason that we can't figure out, like be on the same page of what's going on with me. For you to react and not hear my feelings and be super shitty, like there has to be a massive, like I'm talking at a level two and you're talking at a level nine. We're not on the same story here. So what happens if that was your answer and I say to you, so because mm -hmm. you were hung up on something emotionally that you haven't been able to work through yet, my, my desires and needs are not being met because of it. Mm -hmm. That's your response. That's it. Well, that's my okay. question to you because you're, you're hung up on something. I'm right. not, my sexual needs are not being met and you're hung up on something that I have no idea or control over because I can't control your emotions. Right. So at that point, like <clears throat> I'm not saying that what he's doing is right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not what I'm doing here. Me giving these hypotheticals is trying to figure out how to fix right. the underlying sex issue that's going on there because this is obviously he's an addict. This right. is super important for him. But I know that sex is super important to me and our sex mm -hmm. life is amazing. And if our sex life got fucked up because you were having an emotional whatever 
and I was unaware of it and didn't know what was going on and you didn't communicate with me or you felt like you couldn't communicate with me and our sex life got fucked up and then I started looking at at thirst traps on TikTok and you got mad at me over it. I oh, told I didn't, you. I didn't think about all of that. I told you that my sexual needs aren't yeah. being, being met. We had an understanding at the beginning of our courtship that that sex is an important facet of all of this. Mm-hmm. You're not meeting my needs. I'm clearly not meeting yours for whatever the reason is, but you're getting mad at me because you're not doing your duties. Okay. Had you told me that there was an emotional issue and something like that, and we were able to work through that, right? then we got to this point, that would be a different conversation than you withholding both your emotions and sex right. and then getting mad at me because I'm looking at women on the internet. Okay. I wasn't thinking about any of that when I just gave you my answer. Well, that was, that was my answer to your answer. What? I need to take a second. That was aggressive. I mean, that's... Right, I know, but that that would be the response. So now I'm processing because I know you're frustrated. I am a key component in that frustration. Sexually frustrated. Right, sexually frustrated. This is what I would do after you did that. Because now I have to not take that personally. Like Mm ego-wise, I can't take that personally. So this is not an excuse. It's an explanation. I am somebody who needs that drawback to reality from my own brain sometimes. And you saying all of that would have grounded me a little bit more in reality. I have a hard time not getting wrapped up in my just cyclone of bullshit in my brain, like the mental illnesses and the self-doubt and the overthinking and the insecurities like... And there's times where I'm Dorothy just going around in there. And every once in a while when you say something, it does ground me like that. So that would probably be one of those moments. So there would be a lot of self-reflection happening. And I would acknowledge that you were right, that that was the agreement. And now I have wavered in that. That would be a problem for me. And that might be like a self-realization moment. And then I might start crying. There would be apologizing for like dropping my duty as your woman and wife. So it would be accountability, apology, and then an elaboration on what I've been going through to help you understand because now my tornado is your tornado. Your life has been calm waters until this moment where I tell you that I'm not okay. Right. Hence the frustration that you just had. This is a lot to process. Would you be able to give the emotional aspect that you're that you haven't gotten into at that point? Because um, at this point, like you said, you're probably going to be crying. Right. You will be crying. Yeah. But would you be able to to unload the emotional aspect of what's not being met for me in that moment without attacking me? I would have to try my best, and that's one of those moments where I have to preface with like, "Look, babe, I I might be an asshole right now." I I don't mean to attack you if it comes across that way. If I say something that sounds dick, say it back to me and then we can work through to get to the real meaning that I have to to give to you. And then we can move on from that to the next thing. And if I say something that's dick, say it back to me. Or just say, wow, that was really dick. And I'll think of another way to say it. Because not only is me saying I'm about to be an asshole to you, you being a dick to me, I can't take that personally because I'm being... right. I'm being rough right now. So there would be resolution to this. Yes, there would have to be. Because the only way things are going to get better is if she feels that there's an emotional safety there or she gives up of herself and and does what he's wanting. Right. The issue that I see in all of that, just to take this a step further, is that when you watch porn and Mm -hmm. you are addicted to that, it gets worse. Oh, it does, yeah. The need to feel that right now and the things that you watch become more and more hardcore, more extreme. Right. And there's not going to be a balance. You guys, if you guys are listening to this, I highly recommend that you go back and watch the episodes, the interviews that we did with Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Um, He is a recovered porn addict who has a, um, a business helping people recover from addiction, from porn addiction. So highly recommend that you go look, look at previous episodes for that. Uh, Mm -hmm. I believe that they posted in January of this year. So, um, but he stated flat out that it gets worse. You're going for it. It's no different than a heroin addict, right? You got, you, you know, mm-hmm. you get, you're chasing that high and your tolerance gets up and you're just going for that next thing and that next thing and that next thing. And what would have killed you in the beginning 
is now just enough to get you even. Mm-hmm. Right. So like that's insane to think about it. it but it's like that. That's all addictions. <laughs> you, you look at people with a gambling addiction. It's the same thing. OK, so let's go back to the conversation that we are having on the okay. hypothetical in the event that <laughs> that all got played out. Right. Would we fuck the same night as the argument? Yes. Why? Because. Because there was resolution. OK. And we aren't mad at each other after those moments. So even though that's a really big thing, it was just resolved. So if we've gone six months without having intimacy, that's too long. If we've gone... Yeah, even saying (laughs) that just made me upset. Don't do that. Let's like six days. Let's say six days because that's too long. Okay. So it's been six days. That's six days. That's too long. (laughs) You, you remember that scene in Pirates of the Caribbean where he's like, too long, and kicks the guy off the plank? Yeah, it's, that's my brain right now. I know. Hypotheticals are hard. Yeah, <laughs> they are. So it's been six days, which may vary for you guys, right? If you have five, six kids, and they're all varying ages, and you're able to get it in six times a month, if four is concerning for you, let it be concerning. Right. It's been six days. That six days of pent up anticipation, first off, but it's also that emotional release is there. There is that, it's not just reconnected between us, it's stronger. It's reinforced. We mended the foundation and now it's stronger. Okay. I, yeah, I'm going to be all over your bones. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back to the email. <laughs> He stays away from home as much as possible, blaming our six-month-old daughter and refusing to share a room or bathroom. What do you think about that? That sounds like the relationship's over to me. Yeah. That We know that people change when kids happen. Right. Life changes when kids are six-month-old. Mm-hmm. Postpartum still still happening right oh, now, 100%. right? Life has changed. You can't give your partner 100% of you when there's kids involved. Mm-hmm. I, I sat on the couch last night for three fucking hours waiting for you to come out of the kid's bedroom because you have yeah. to cuddle and read and do your mom thing every single night. <clears throat> that three hours is lonely as fuck. I get up and pace the house. Do you? Yeah, I, I'm bored as shit sitting out there by myself. I'm so sorry. I, there's nothing to be sorry about. There's kids involved. The kids get the attention. Like it, our relationship is intact. The kids are thriving. Like, mm-hmm. but that three hours of mom time, I'm I'm twiddling my thumbs. You know, this sucks. I mean. <laughs> I'm apologetic because I get it. Like when you're away doing business things, I'm like, could live in a box and you could be here all the time. (laughs) But like, I get it though, because those are things that it's important. You have to go do those things. So I'm not apologizing because I feel bad. Yeah. When you have a man (laughs) who is used to getting all of the attention from a woman and a, a child comes in and he wants that attention or needs that attention, that child taking that attention away will 100% become a problem for that man. Yeah. So you guys should evaluate those things when you're with somebody. If you got a needy motherfucker and you have a kid, you're going to have problems when that kid's born. Yeah. So let me ask you this. As a mom, I have never thought that there could be a built up resentment towards a child because that attention is now derived away. Right. Could that really be a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's why most men won't be with a woman who has kids. Huh. It, it's why they're they're a sex object and not like a serious long-term commitment. Is it? Okay. Especially when the woman's like, my kids come first no matter what, always. Right. Because now I know I'm not a priority and I'm going to be third, fourth, or fifth on the list of things that are important to you and there's no reason for me to commit to that ever. Right. And that, that would suck. Like, if the roles were reversed, you were a dad with two young kids... And I know for a fact that I'm number like four or five on that list because there would be the children and then the children's mother and then maybe your mom. Children's mother shouldn't factor into that. I know, but for a lot of people it might. Like if the mom calls and she's super vindictive and threatens right. to withhold the children yes. and he has to be on the phone for two or three hours when he has the children or without the children just because she wants to have a chaos. Yeah, that's why you should have a lawyer right? and you should have everything in, in court documents. It, so let's let's do the role reversal, right? So let's okay. say that they were my kids and you were the bonus mom in this. And 
we do have the age gap that we have and you want to live life and do life shit. I've mm-hmm. done life shit. Right. Right. And now I got two kids that I got to take care of and you want to do a date night three or four nights a week. Well, I got kids three nights a week mm-hmm. and we have life shit that has to happen and we have other things that are going on. It's very easy for somebody to be like, well, I feel like I'm not a priority. I want to live my life and I don't get to live my life because the person that I want to share my life with can't go do things. Right. That That's a very normal feeling for people. That's mm-hmm. why it takes a lot for somebody to step up and be a bonus parent and truly be involved as a bonus parent. Right. Because there's a lot of sacrifice that comes into that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that parents like the, the, the parent understands that sacrifice because the parent is already making the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. They decided to make that sacrifice when they decided to be a parent. Right. So, and that's not a, you know, you love your kids. When you meet mm-hmm. somebody, they don't love your fucking kids. Right. They have to get to know your kids. Right. And there's a, a possibility. They may not like your kids. Mm-hmm. Kids are assholes, especially teenagers. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I make it a point because the kids do get a lot of my attention. The other day we opened up the house because it was so nice out. We were getting that cross breeze and you were standing out the front door just looking outside. And I came up behind you and I wrapped my arms around you and I laid my head on you. And our daughter came over and I was like, no, not right now. Like, I'm loving on pops. Give me a minute. And I stood there and she kept going. I was like, babes, give me one minute. Pops has my attention right now, and I promise you will get my attention next. There is a boundary set there. Yeah. There has to be a balance. Right. There's also, that also says a lot about how to love your parent, like your person as a parent. Yeah. You know, the kids get a shit ton of attention. We then had a group hug afterwards. I remember that moment. Yeah, they all came over and we hugged. But it's one of those things that you get to, your kids get to see you um, in love. Right. Like what love should look like. Right. Let's get back to the email. Okay. We, we side railed pretty hard. Okay. I'm not allowed to access any of his devices while he has all of my passwords. When I offered to leave temporarily, he called me names, making it difficult for me to make a break. Because he called you names? Sticks and stones, baby. Six sticks and stones. It sounds like... Control and abuse. Control like. and abuse and... um. When I was in the fog, I hate it when people told me you're just not seeing clear right now. Yeah. Fucking hated it when people told me that. Now that I am in the clear, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Get a good lawyer. Yep. This this is this is one of those situations where uh remember early on when people said that, that there is a financial abuse? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Do you remember that conversation we right. had? Because it was on a podcast. Mm-hmm. They have a traditional relationship where he pays all the bills and she exists off of his money while he does whatever the fuck he wants to do, which means she doesn't have the money to leave. Right. So in this situation, I can understand that being an abusive situation because he's got her under thumb and there's nothing she can do about it. Right. Yeah. I would start reaching out to family members. I would too. I would too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let, I wouldn't live like that. That, um, is there a whole lot more to this? Um, no, there's just one more paragraph. Let's get through the email. I feel exhausted mentally and physically and desperately need to break longer than 15 minutes. I know he has the potential to be a great husband and father, but the current situation feels toxic. I'm not sure if this is a traditional marriage or just an excuse for control. It is an excuse for control. That's not what traditional looks like. 100% an excuse for control. I would call my mom. How, how do you know that he can be a good husband and a good father when you haven't experienced that? Right. You're only six months with a baby. Yeah. And if he's not being a good father now, what makes you think he can be? You guys aren't aren't sharing a room. He won't use the bathroom, even share a bathroom with you. Mm-hmm. Talk about a real disconnect. Right. I need my own bathroom. Do you think that he got married for benefits? I mean, you do make more money in the military if you're married. You get better housing credits. Like, there's a whole lot of things that come along with that. That's not a traditional relationship. No, though. it's not. Like, so now I'm thinking that he found someone who. I'm not trying to be insulting in saying this. He found somebody who was mendable, right? Malleable. Malleable, moldable. Mm. Um, and that is somebody, I've lived this, who has low self-esteem, maybe has trauma that they haven't gotten over yet, are seeking invalidation that they are wanted, that they are loved. And that's easy to give, right? If the end goal is marriage, that's easy to give until you're married. 
Once that's done, a lot of people who tend to abuse or use control, that's it for them. Like that's their end game. Now they can do whatever they want and you're already under their thumb. There's a hopium in that. There is a lot of hopium in that because you can remember the good times. Right. Well, he showed me the first year we were together, everything was amazing. Well, it's year four and it hasn't been good for two years now, like yeah. or three years or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So you hold on to this idea of what somebody was and maybe that's who they really were in that season of their life. And maybe things have changed right? and things have snowballed and gotten out of control and who they were then doesn't exist now because of life happenings. Mm -hmm. And you can't go back to that first year because of all of these experiences have now muddied the water. Right. And that, that muddied water can absolutely clear, but the life experience that happened during that time frame, you're down, down river now. Like mm -hmm. you're just, that's just not a thing. So I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like this, this situation. Um, I obviously don't have his side of things and I'm sure that he's got his own opinion, but right. there are things in this email that I vehemently disagree with yep. and it wouldn't matter what his argument was. I still think he's wrong for it. I agree. hundred so, percent. If this were my daughter, I'd be concerned. Yeah, I would be too. I would, if it was our daughter, I'd be setting up a bank account Yeah, and I would be slowly trying to trickle money into that so that if she needed an escape plan, she had it. Yeah. Let's let's do one more okay. and then call it a day because I know you want to dye your hair and we have movies in we six do. hours, five hours. All right. Roommate phase update at the end. Okay. Hi, Chris and Peaches. Hello. I'm not going to say any names. I apologize in advance if this is long and too much information. I've heard you both say add as much detail as possible on your podcast. If this isn't enough info, please reach out. Feel free to cut anything out if it is unnecessary or too much. I love your podcast and just found it recently. My husband doesn't listen yet. Hoping he will, but I often talk to him about it. I hope he will, but I often talk to him about things from the podcast. I'm very behind on episodes. I'm on episode six currently. Oh, you're in for a whirlwind. <laughs> I want to say a huge thank you. Just from listening to your podcast has made a huge difference in my marriage. Some details. My husband and I started dating in high school, and we were together for seven years before getting married. Okay, that's a hell of a foundation. Mm -hmm. We are both now 25. We got married almost two years ago, and it is our first time truly living together. It has been a huge learning curve for us. I thought since I've stayed over at his house plenty of times, and we had discussions of division of labor and our roles when we became husband and wife, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You know that they say that people who don't live together before marriage are more successful in marriage? Really? Yep. Studies have shown that people who do not live together before they get married actually are better off long term in their marriage, like less divorce. Yep. It's a thing. Why? I don't know why. Oh, I'm so curious. I, I didn't see all the, the reasoning and shit. I just, that's what the study said. Huh. Okay. I mean, obviously that wasn't. Okay, no, no, not obviously. You don't, you wouldn't even know. I can't ask you that. I'm thinking so much right now. <laughs> like, was that study done on people who knew each other for six months, or have they been dating for three years? Right, but the amount of people who move in together within the first six months, like, yeah, because there's a necessity in that. Mm -hmm. With inflation and the devaluation of the dollar and what's going on with our government, a lot of people can't afford to live on their own. Yeah. So when two people mesh and and the the rose colored glasses are on and life is amazing, that first six months they're like. You're paying two thousand dollars a month, and I'm paying two thousand dollars a month. We can live together and pay a thousand each. Mm -hmm. Let's do that, and they do it out of necessity versus true foundation and commitment. So don't do that if you have children, please. Yeah. Back into the email. Yep. I was wrong. About three years into dating, we hit a huge roommate phase and nearly broke up. He felt I wasn't pulling my weight, and I'll be honest, I wasn't. We had zero intimacy. My drive was incredibly low. At the time, we were both in college, and I was in the middle of my fourth year program to become a nurse. It was the hardest four years of my life. I was beyond stressed and depressed. We realized a lot of my low drive has to do with me being on birth control, but wasn't something we could change. Pause. Um, there, It is something you could change. It you is. could start using condoms, but... Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a sponsorship with Matrix Hormones, and this is a great time to plug them. Uh, Matrix Hormones, when we did an interview with Ken and Sean, the owners of Matrix, they were very adamant about the um, 
issues that come with birth control Mm -hmm. and how quick people tend to get on them when they're young and how it fucks up their hormones long term. And like, that's a big problem. So for those of you who are are ladies who have been on birth control for a while, I highly recommend that you get your blood levels checked through Matrix. Um, If you go to their website, matrixhormones.com, click on the new patient form, fill out the new patient form. And when it asks who referred you, put in to be better. It's a drop down menu. It'll save you $200 on your initial consultation with them. If you are a man and you're experiencing depression, sleeplessness, or um, overly tired, also get your blood levels checked. You never know what's going on inside of your body, and they might find things that you otherwise wouldn't know. Our friend Katie found out that she had cancer by getting blood work done. Yep. So it is very important that you guys do that, and to save that kind of money is a godsend. So $200 off, to be better, matrixhormones.com. I even switched my birth control multiple times and no changes. During this time, my husband took care of me. I couldn't drive at the time, so he drove to work in my dorm if needed, and it was often. I was trying to learn to drive, and my mom and dad weren't teaching me no matter how much I asked. I tried to drive with his mom when she and I were both available. My husband, boyfriend at the time, was pretty much my sole supporter. He is the only reason I made it through. He has expressed during that time that he felt like a roommate or even a parent. If you ever feel that way, you tell me, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't allow that to happen. Okay, I, I would never want you to mother me, and I would never want to father you. Right, right. So, like, if that be that's an intimacy killer all around. Yeah, and we hear it all the time from women who are like, "I don't want to. I shouldn't have to 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 mother him." Then why are you? Right, right. This situation, he felt like he was fathering. It created a whole lot of tension between the two of them. Yeah. People don't like that. You don't want to marry your parents. Yeah. At that time, he was helping me out a lot financially. I was not great with money. My mom hadn't really taught me how to be responsible with my money or how to save. I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the them helping you with money thing. Yeah. If he's got it and he's able to do it, I don't see a problem with it. If it's if he didn't have it and he was spending all of his money trying to make sure you were staying afloat and he was struggling financially because of it, that would be a problem. Really? Yes. Okay, so... Well, I'm hung up on there's not a problem with the financially. She said she wasn't good with money. Right. So if she's going out and spending $300 on a shopping spree and then goes, Hey babe, I need money for groceries this week. Well, that's a different scenario. Right. That's how I took. I'm not good with money. I, 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 well, I was also thinking the fact that she was in school to become a nurse. Yeah. Like if she's working full time and going to school to be a nurse full time, like I can't imagine there's a whole lot of money to be thrown around there. Yeah. So yeah, either way you're, you're right in that aspect. That's, that's a problem if she's not good with money. Yeah. Yeah. I see your point of view, though. Going to nursing school does spread somebody thin. Yeah. Well, our our friend April in California is getting ready. She's like on like the fourth level of becoming a nurse. Yeah. She's getting ready to do like administrative shit. And she's about to finish her school this year. And every time I talk to her, I'm like, how's life? And she's like, I'm doing the school thing. I'm like, that's it. And she's like, yeah, I work in school and that's it. She's like, I have one person that I talk to outside of like my normal day to day interactions. It's consumed her. Yeah. So hearing that she was going through the worst aspect of her life during that four years, I fucking believe it. Yeah. Because I'm having conversations with people I've known for 30 years who's doing the same shit. Mm -hmm. So. Good for April, though. Yeah, she's fucking killing it in life. Like, she's going to get through this. I don't know how long it takes to go to school for fourth level nurse. Yeah. I'm assuming at least 10. Uh, No. No. Uh, No, because she's already got other degrees. So it's not like a, I don't know what they're called. But it, you start off as like a CNA, right? right? That's the easy one to get. And then there's the next level. Mm-hmm. I think it's like an LPN. And then another one. And then another one. And once you get to that, like where she's going for now for administrators, she can write like prescriptions and shit for doctors. And okay. like, um, I don't know. April's one of the few friends in life that has the business mindset like mm-hmm. I have that's always had it. But she's goal oriented. So she wants to do her licensing and business yeah. shit first to get her career going and then invest in business and like she's gonna take off yeah yeah but i think that's super gangster but her next season of life is gonna be so dope yeah well she's about to get a huge fucking raise when she gets this degree Whew. so nursing shit's difficult though i i respect people that's willing to do that kind of schooling because you're you're putting yourself out you know a decade of life mm. realistically when you think about it because it's one degree after another yeah it is a lot of schooling it's worth yeah. it though I've watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I could never. Just hearing the way that a lot of nurses and doctors are talked to, like how people talk to them, I am 
It takes a very strong minded person. Yeah. To continue wanting to care for people, even though they're super nasty to you and a defamatory and all that, like different kind of soul. We need those souls. What you doing? Playing footsie. <laughs> was that cute for you? It was funny. Yes. That uh, you didn't say it was cute, but I'll still accept that as a win. I thought it was cute. It was the eye contact for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wanted to make sure you caught on to what I was doing. Oh, I, I know what you were doing. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you too. After a huge fight, he decided he needed a break. Initially, it was supposed to be three months. It ended up being maybe a week in the middle of finals week. That week was hell. I had given him some space, but reached out because I was not willing to lose him. I wanted to change and make our relationship work. He made some stipulations and I agreed to them. I got in a better place financially and I went to driving school and I got my driver's license. Ooh, look at that. She found solutions because of a catalyst. Yep. Because she knew she was about to lose a good man. Yep. It's crazy how that plays out. Right? Oh, that's controlling. How dare him set boundaries like that? Look at the level up that came with it. Right? It's a life standard. Yep. We agreed to make sure we didn't spend as much time together. What? We agreed to make sure we didn't spend as much time together. Because they were trying to take a break. Back then, I was very insecure and spent 90% of my time with him. He needed more space to himself to decompress because he was trying to decide if he was going to join the military. Oh, okay. We had a lot of changes during that time to lead to where we are now. Flash forward. She actually wrote it. That's funny. To today, we have been in a roommate phase again. I am a full-time nurse, and he is full-time active duty Air Force. We got married right after he was overseas for a year. From being around each other, most of the time to being completely separated for a year, then to living together, it was a shock. I bet. We had gotten engaged, eloped, added a puppy to our family, moved across the U.S., and both started new jobs in a matter of two weeks. Wow. What a whirlwind. No Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, I feel like my hair is messy after going through that tunnel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a lot. There's so much energy in all of that. Yeah. Like there's something happening every day and all of it's exciting. Pure chaos. Oh man. Yep. Pure chaos. Our relationship tanked. Again, I had no drive. There was no intimacy or fun. I hated my job. I was overworked. I felt I was doing all the work in the home. I love being a traditional wife, but for how I handled stress at the time, it was too much, especially working full time. I worked 12 hours getting yelled at by patients, come home depressed and stressed, cook dinner for us both, clean what I could of the house, and then expected to please my husband physically. Over time, I expressed I needed help. My husband did help, but it felt like it was never enough for me. Why is that? Right. Why? Because he helped. He stepped up. You reached out, he grabbed your hand, and he pulled. So what was wrong? Because that's, if I'm hanging off a cliff and I'm like, babe, help, and you pull me up, thank you. Right. <laughs> there, there's no complaining about how I maybe scratched my knee climbing up because you didn't grab my elbow the right way. Like, it's, you, thank you for helping me and saving my life. I think that this comes down to the tank not being full and not taking the time to re, you know, recharge, mm -hmm. right? And even though she asked for help and he gave it, she still didn't do what she needed to do in terms of self-care and decompression to like balance that out. So what was done in the time? Because he stepped in and he helped. So what, what was that time being devoted to now? Well, we, it's, this is a really simple thing, mm -hmm. right? When we have free time, we find things to fill that free time. Right. People do uh, most people don't do well with just sitting around. Yeah, I feel like a lazy piece of shit. Right. Because we're taught to go, 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 go. Yeah. Right? Hustle culture, whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. So when you have that, you're used to always doing these things, right? And like, let's say you never have time to, to scrub the baseboards. And now he's doing dishes. So while he's doing dishes, you're scrubbing baseboards. Instead of taking a bath. Right. That's where that comes from. Yeah. So it wasn't enough. Hurried woman syndrome. Yeah. There's also a lack of communication there and that there was still a whole lot of shit that needed to be done and they weren't able to create a new, yeah. a new, hey, let's get caught up and then we can go back to the way things were. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to take a second and just go like there are multiple times throughout the month where both of us will stop doing what we're doing and just go like, hey, we're a power couple. Like we're fucking doing it. We're mm-hmm. doing the thing. Take pride in that. Like he's in the Air Force. You're a nurse. You guys are doing massive things with your life. It sucks. Any job that brings a mental factor to it sucks. Yeah. I can see the stress in that creating issues in sex life too. Yeah. That mental exhaustion's a bitch. Mm-hmm. Like physically tired is one thing. Mentally tired is a whole different ballgame. So... I highly recommend any couple that struggles with like a low drive or a lack of desire every night before you go to bed, just kiss each other for like 10 minutes. Little make out session. Little make out session. And if it goes somewhere, dope. If it doesn't, you guys just had some intimacy before bed. Sometimes it's enough too. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're dealing with the low things, get your hormones checked. (laughs) Matrixhormones.com. Matrix hormones. Plug, plug, plug. Tell them to be better sent you. Yep. Why should they tell them that to be better sent them? Because it'll save them $200 in our consultation. That's groceries. Yeah. You you know that we went through like a weird depressive phase with me because I came off all my hormones while I was waiting because the last company that I used would make me come off. Right. And they would not prescribe anything until I had new blood panels done to see where my blood panels were, even though we already knew that I was low. Right. And there was a, there was about two weeks there where you were like, this, this sucks. And I'm like, how do you think I feel? I'm fucking depressed. I have no energy. My sex drive is shit. Like, Mm -hmm. and it it literally took one fucking appointment for them to get me back to normal. I stand by them. I know that there are people out there who may feel how they feel about hormones, but it's necessary for people. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Mm -hmm. I quit my job and got a new one as a postpartum nurse, which I love. I will be there for two years in March. We had many discussions about who would be responsible for what. With us both working full-time jobs, it wasn't reasonable for me to have a full-time job after my full-time nursing job. He did his designated tasks in the home often with a lot of reminding, which really frustrates me and still does. Why? I'm his wife, not his mother. She wrote that? She did. So that is your perspective. Gentle reminders really are not a big deal. No. No, it's a big deal because society tells you that you shouldn't have to ask for those things. Right. Right? Because that's what you hear on the internet all the time. I shouldn't have to ask. Yeah. Yeah, you fucking should. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes down to it, you don't know what he's going through. Right. And what you view as a really big deal, he may not see as a big deal. Right. You tell me every day the house is disgusting. I'm sorry I couldn't clean as much because we're so busy right now. It's not bad, babe. Uh, This is, I I can live like this. I'm good. If it was a big deal, I would jump in and help and like get us caught up. If I thought you were really that far behind and needed the aid, like I'm good. Okay. So like, but that's what that should you need to remind me like, babe, can you sweep today? Yeah, I got you. Two hours goes by and I didn't sweep. Are you getting mad at me for not sweeping when you asked me to? Because I got other shit going on. It'll get done. And if I forget and it's six o'clock at night and we're winding down, be like, hey, did you sweep? Nope, but I I will. And I'm Mm going to jump up and sweep and get it done so that at 6.15 I can sit down. Right. Right? Like, We actually have a real life example of this. (laughs) mm -hmm. So I do handle all of the household duties. That was something that I, that was my stipulation because I have a standard to things. And when I'm on my A game, clean environment, clean environment, right? right? Like mental space, clear, home space is clear. So when I do need help with something, hey, babe, I need you to knock out the laundry for me today. And then maybe two hours go by. Hey, babe, did you throw the laundry in? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have to put it in the dryer now. Dope. Our dryer, we had to run it two cycles. I don't know why. We just do. And if that if I have not walked past the dryer, I'm out of the house. Like, hey, babe, start the dryer for the second time. That's a real life thing that we do. I don't feel like I'm mothering my husband in that moment. There's also real life situations where I still forget to start the dryer a second time and have to start laundry all over again. Yeah. Because just like you, I'm fucking busy during the daytime mm-hmm. and I have a whole lot of other shit that needs my attention right now. And the laundry is really not that it's like at like 17 on my list of priorities of shit that needs to get done. Yeah. And, and if it's number three on mine, right. I just need to knock it out. Right. You guys need to stop listening to society. 
-hmm. When somebody tells you you shouldn't have to ask, they're telling you that you don't need to communicate your needs to your person. That's what that says to me. Just driving division. Yeah. I'm miserable in my relationship. And because I'm miserable in my relationship, let me tell you how to live yours. Yeah. So that we can just be miserable together. And then we can go to lunch and talk shit about our husbands. I'm good on that. He grew up very blessed with a very kind mom who did everything for him until he joined the Air Force. I try to understand that he is learning how to maintain his parts of the household. I grew up with a young mom. She had me at 17 and was raised to do everything for myself. I knew I didn't want that in my marriage. Things got better, but we were still missing the intimacy because I felt like I'm a mother. I didn't want to remind him. I wanted him to know what he needs to be done and just do it. I wanted him to know what needs to be done and just do it. I'm going to say it, and this is going to hurt some feelings. That's a high horse thought process. Mm -hmm. You just said that you know that he grew up in a household with a, a mom who did everything for him. That has been his life. I think it's also important to think about that. Like when you really think about that, there are facets of our life where I'm a fucking slob. Right. And there's facets of our life where I'm super organized mm -hmm. because the shit that matters to me matters. Right. And the things that don't matter, don't matter. I'll wear, I'll wear the same shirt two days in a row. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing anything other than sitting in the house, and I'm not getting gross and sweaty. I'll wear that shirt a second day. And I'll wear pants three or four times before I wash them. If I'm not doing anything that makes them dirty. So next to my bed is a giant fucking pile of clothes. Yep. And when I get tired of looking at that pile of clothes and I'm like, all right, it's time to do laundry. I clean that pile up. Mm -hmm. Happens once every three or four months. Yep. If you were like, are you going to ever clean that pile up? And you were being like, like controlling over that? No, I'm not. Because this is the way I choose to live my life. If right. this bothers you, we can adjust the bedroom so that you don't ever see that pile because this is my existence. Mm -hmm. Don't expect me to change how I've lived 43 years of my life because you don't like it. Right. How about you accept that this is who I am as a person. This is the man you married mm -hmm. and you love me. Yeah. And this is just one of my quirk quirks. Oh, well, I saw that during our, our sleepovers. Right. So I knew what I was getting into. Yep. It's not mothering. It's, it's not, acceptance. Yeah. The and I, I clean around that pile of clothes too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm not going to disturb your system because right. I'm not going to know where I'm throwing the t-shirt that you're looking for two days from now. Yep. I, I don't understand why that's a problem for people. Mm -hmm. I really don't. You have different standards. If if it was a problem for him and he realized that like, like let's say his job was to make sure that the living room is dusted mm -hmm. and he's looking around and he's like, I mean, it could use it, but it's not bad. And you're like, oh my God, this place is disgusting. He sees it as not bad. You see it as disgusting. There's the problem. Right. You're expecting him to clean to your standards versus his. Right. Perception is reality. If mm -hmm. I think the living room is not dirty, I'm not cleaning the fucking living room. Why would I clean something that's clean? Right. And if you're like, oh my God, this place is fucking filthy and you're laying into me and I'm like, it's not. Yeah. And you're making a big deal out of nothing. You're picking a fight for no fucking reason. That's how you view that. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's going to be problems in your marriage. Right. He literally cannot see what you see. Right. Now, if there's like empty water bottles and Coke cans and plates and empty chip bags sitting around. It's a very different scenario. Very different scenario. When you say it first, I can say it right. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Back into the email. Yep. Over the last year, our second year of marriage, I tried to explain to my husband that I cannot have a full-time job and be the traditional housewife. I simply don't have the mental capacity. I would love to be a stay-at-home wife and have the traditional role, but we aren't at a place financially where that is possible yet. Yet. We have no kids yet, but we have three dogs. We came to the conclusion that the goal is for me to work part-time or not work at all one day. I love being a wife. I want to dive into my feminine. I trust my husband and know that he can take care of me. I simply haven't let him. Ooh. That's a hell of a statement. Love the accountability in that. Yeah. Love that. And this isn't even the update. Right. <laughs> I've been letting my need to have control push us apart. I found an app that includes both of us and reminds us when to do chores. That seemed to help. That's I still control. You're still controlling him with a digital leash now. You have a shot collar in your pocket. That's what that is. 
It's a solution, though. It, I mean, it is a solution. It, it definitely works. If your dog is barking, zzz, it shuts the fuck up. But that's still control. It's just control at a distance now. Why? Okay. Remember the, now, the example I gave of the dirty living room? Yes. If my alert went off and said, clean the living room, and I looked around the living room and was like, living room's clean... But the app's telling okay. me I got to clean the living room anyway, so let me go clean the living room anyways. Like, so let's elaborate on your definition of clean, right? Because, right, clean is different for everybody. Say you're looking at the living room and it just needs to be straightened up. Would you leave it that way and say it's clean or would you straighten it up? I would straighten it up. Straighten up the coffee table. Right. Throw the blanket over the back of the couch. Right. Make it look nice. Right. That's different okay. though. That's a once over. Right. That's okay. not cleaning. Well, that's some people's definition of cleaning. No, that's not cleaning. Well, just to de- clarify that. Cleaning is starting with the fan. Right. We're dusting the fan, then dusting everything from above to the ground, mm. then vacuuming the floor, then mopping the floor, making everything, and then tidying, right? Right. There's a difference between a once-over and a clean. Okay. Once-over shouldn't need, you shouldn't need a reminder for that. If you look at the coffee table and there's fucking paper all over it and crayons and markers, and you have a tray there that everything goes in and nothing's mm. in the fucking tray and it's all over the table... You tidy up the table. Okay. You can do that while watching TV. Right. You don't have to get up. So I don't know what it looks like working in the Air Force. I'm just going to assume this dude works five five days a week, 12 hour days. Hypothetical. <laughs> and when he's home, he's working on shit at home. Like fixing the house or cleaning up the yard. Like he is spending a good chunk of his day doing things. I think that ping reminder of go clean the living room... All right, I need to go do that. I'm working on what? I'm sanding wood right now. Hypothetical. I can stop sand. The wood is not going to walk away from me. I can go knock that out. I know. But if he's somebody who forgets things and needs the constant reminders, you are somebody who will stop what they are doing. Still a digital leash. I think it's a solution. Okay. It's a solution. It is. But it is a digital leash. Depending on how you use it. If it's an app that sends automated notifications. Right. You can also set a time for the notifications. Yeah. What? It's one thing to set your Google calendar to tell you what you have to do today. Right. It's another for you to add something into my calendar so that I have to do it. If I'm creating the alerts to remind me, that's me reminding myself. Right. If it's Thursday and you want me to clean the bathroom at three o'clock in the afternoon and it's 2.30 and you're like, clean the bathroom 3 p.m., yeah. And I wasn't planning on having to clean the bathroom and my phone dings and now I have a fucking chore to do. Now that's a problem. That's control. That that's is definitely not, control. Okay. It's not the same thing to me. Well, there are apps out there where it's you guys select your chores mm-hmm. and it's divided and then you can select what day, when and where. Mm-hmm. So there are versions where you can certainly have all of the control in that situation and dictate your own cleaning schedule as long as you get the reminder that it needs to be done. It's not a problem either way. Yeah. I don't live in this situation, so I don't care. I just, <laughs> I'm just pointing out the fact that if you need an app to tell your husband what to do, you're still controlling him. Okay. I think a gentle reminder is a much more efficient way. Yeah. Because it's a you're giving me the opportunity to, to fulfill a need in you. Yeah. I would definitely prefer the gentle reminder. Right. Love makes requests, not demands. And I see a ding, clean the bathroom is a demand. It is. What if it was sent with a booty picture and a please? It's a different, well, the, the, an app, I don't want a booty app from a, a booty photo from an app. <laughs> no, like if I texted you, or like you had the reminder, say I set the reminder in your phone, right? And it pinged and you were like, what the fuck? And then at exact same time, I sent a booty picture and said, please. It changes things though, because you're asking me to do something. Okay. Yeah. So that's different. You're making a request. Okay. There's a difference between you need to clean the bathroom today. Right. That's a demand. Mm-hmm. Can you help me out? Yeah. It's a request. When you have a man who loves you mm-hmm. and wants to make you happy, those requests are going to get fulfilled. That's all there is to that. Right. It, may, it may take us a little while, but it'll get done. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There are lazy ass people out there who need there those are. fucking constant reminders. The app seemed to help. I still have to remind him not as often. I'm also learning to let go. I'm famous for trying to deep clean the house all in one day, then being burned out for a few days. I'm learning to prioritize and not panic clean. It's good. 
Our current struggle is intimacy still, sadly. <clears throat> I work six oh, I work six night shifts in one week, which are all twelve hours, and I'm off for a week. Often the week I work, we barely see one another. Because I do majority of the household tasks like cooking, mopping, and cleaning the house can become quite unmanageable the week I work. Thankfully, he has been better at doing his work like caring for the lawn, cleaning the bathroom, taking care of the dishwasher, helping care for the dogs, and splitting the laundry 50-50. He works 6 to 4 Monday through Friday. We struggle having enough time together. Y'all are busy. Yeah. So he's also working 12-hour shifts. 6 to 4? Yeah. No, 10-hour shifts. Okay. I typically stay kind of off night shift when I'm off at what? We struggle having enough time together. I typically stay kind of on night shift when I'm off as well. Yeah, so she sleeps during the daytime. They don't see each mm-hmm. other. So, of course, there's an in- issue with intimacy. You guys aren't... Right. You're not doing anything. You're existing together. Mm-hmm. That's not a relationship. Right. That is the definition of the roommate phase. It is. Instead of waking up at 3 p.m. and working until 8 a.m., I wake up at 12 and stay up until maybe 3 a.m. depending. I try to do all my housework when he is at work or sleeping. The part where we get tripped up is he often needs to decompress after work. He often plays video games for hours each night. That sounds like an excuse. I agree because... Okay, yeah, hang on. I need to process that. Because you work night shift. So if he's playing video games when he gets off of work, what time does she leave for her night shift at 3 p.m.? He works until 4, so you're gone by the time he gets home from work. I can see why immediately playing video games is a decompression for him those days that you're there. The week that you're off, though, that man needs to put those games away until you either go to bed or you go off and do your separate thing and spend quality time together. There's a routine that's been established here. Yeah. Right? So that routine is continuing even when she's off of work. So it's been two years. Yeah. Why Why was that not a discussion when the shifts changed? That immediately, like, I would have come to you and said, okay, look, we've been doing this for a month. I'm recognizing that we really don't have any time together. How can we carve out time for us? Because I am lacking and I'm empty. I need a recharge. You're my battery. Don't ignore me. I would put a limit on how much video game time is spent when you're home. Right. You would do that out of your own fruition. I wouldn't play video games. So whatever your decompression time I, is. I would I would I would spend a little bit of time, 30 minutes showering, mm-hmm. getting changed, and then just kind of chilling on the couch trying to get my wits about. Actually, that's a lie. If we had that situation and I knew I had specific things that needed to get done, I would come home and before I showered and got ready. I would just do all my chores Mm -hmm. and then I would jump in the shower, decompress in the shower and like get a little bit of relaxation on the couch as my decompression from work dad or work man into dad or husband or whatever. And then I would worry about my evening. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't play video games when you're home because I don't get to see you. Right. I would utilize that time for us. Video games are fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a whole lot of shit that men do that they, they love as their hobbies, but. I Don't would you still love your woman. I would still prioritize my family over those things. Yeah. I will in the middle of working when the kids come home, stop what I'm doing and ride my bike with the kids. Mm-hmm. I will you take do. them on their quads. I, I will spend that family time because I can't get that time back. Mm-hmm. That editing can happen after they go to bed. The video games can happen after they go to bed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I can I can work my schedule around my family to still 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 do the things that need to get done and the things that I, I want to get done. But you have to prioritize the things that matter the most. Having an intimate, loving relationship matters the most. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Every night this week. So with my ankle injury, when I do too much, I can tell I'm doing too much and I need to like back off or I'm going to hurt myself more. And like you said before, I feel like the house is not up to par. This week has been busy as shit, though. So we have not had a single down day this week. No, we haven't. Um, so after I pick up the kids and come home, I have the option to either start cleaning 
or we're going outside and we're playing mommy monster. Like I'm about to devour these children in a soup that I'm brewing. (laughs) And we run around and we play for 45 minutes and then you come outside and we do the family thing doing whatever we're doing. I agree. That is definitely top priority. I can clean the kitchen after the kids are in bed. Yep. They're jumping in the shower. Dope. I have 30 minutes. I can sweep and vacuum real quick. It's priorities. Yep. You give attention to the things that matter the most to you in your life. And if video games means more to you than your person, that's that's really what you're telling them by playing video games when you should be spending time with them. Yeah. Into the email. Mm-hmm. Chris, I know what you're going to say. He is usually pretty good. I've gotten more understanding over the years. My husband has a lot of pent-up anger for various reasons that he has no way to express, so he plays video games. He would like therapy, but due to the military, if he sees that kind of help, it will prevent him from being able to do his job fully. I did a garden interview with, I believe her name was Taylor. She was in the Navy, and I did not know that that was a thing. Absolutely blew my mind when she said when I finally broke down and said that I needed mental help, they put me like offshore yeah, guarding for a year. I was like, holy shit. Like you would think that the military would want the best, healthy, clear minds in these roles to make these judgments and whatnot. They do. That's why they put you offshore doing guard duty. Right. If you're having mental health issues. Hmm. The problem is, is people don't want to lose their career or not level up and they do so in risk of their mental health. That's a them problem, not an army problem. You want the best of the best to do their job. Yeah. And if you're having mental issues and you can't level up in your career because of it, you need to take some time off and get your mental health in order. That's not the military's problem. That's a you problem. Um, She's wrong, though, because she said, Chris, I know what you're going to say. I actually didn't say any of that. Yeah. Ha, you didn't know. (laughs) He is in no way, he is in no way violent towards me or anyone. He does yell at the games, but if I ever step in or say something, he usually stops unless he's had a particularly hard day. Along with the video games, he will stop when I talk to him or ask for help, and if he doesn't, he will give me a time frame when he can pause. While he games, we'll chat about our day or I'll read. All healthy. Yeah, all of that, that's dope. That is fantastic to hear. You know what? He should look into therapy on YouTube. Yeah. That's my recommendation to your man. He needs to look at therapist on YouTube and ingest everything he can, even if he thinks it might not help him. He is very much a person who feels love when we are simply in the same room together, where I prefer more active participation. So we compromise. We have dinner together every night. We usually watch a show together while we eat. We have at least one date a month and try our best to plan trips for just us two at least twice a year if we can. Where we struggle is time together when I work. It feels like every other week, I work every other week. We barely see each other after, we barely see each other adding to this roommate phase. Of course, because you're both working. Right. It's normal life shit. That is... So perspective, you're looking at this as a downside. Yeah. You have one week to miss each other. That's going to make the time that you guys spend together so much more sweeter. When I'm away from you, I miss you. Yeah. Like it sucks missing you, but it's also really dope missing you because when I get back, it's going to be so much more. There's going to be a a newer energy to exchange between us because we haven't been sitting stagnant all day. We struggle with how to prioritize our time. Please help. I usually was up at 4 p.m. And he usually gets home from work then. He typically makes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He eats them religiously every single day while I cook dinner. (laughs) Okay, so. You make that sandwich for him before he gets home. I would do that. Make the sandwich. Also, this is a pattern. Now he has something else that he routinely does every single day. So this tells me that he is somebody who needs the gentle reminders. He's military. It's routine. He needs the gentle reminders. Everything is routine in the military. You have such structure. Everything is structure. Yeah. 
We'll sometimes eat dinner together and watch a show, or he'll go right to the bedroom because he's exhausted. I'll get ready for work and leave. By the time I'm home from work, he's at work for the day. How can we make more time together? Please give us any advice possible. I've been listening to your podcast while driving, cooking, and cleaning. It has helped immensely with my focus, my productivity, and my happiness. It feels like I'm having a chat with friends. It has given me more appreciation for my husband, and I can more easily recognize how he is a gentleman and how I can be a better wife. I am often a very logical thinker and can be critical and harsh with my words. He has recently agreed to take on the task of solely managing our finances. He is much better with it than I am, and we are both excited for that. Ooh, make that three of us, because I'm also excited for that. <laughs> How dope. I would have never thought to do that without hearing you two talk about it. I really hope it'll take some mental load off of me. It will. I, I don't even think about finances anymore. Hey, babe, can I have 500 bucks? It's either, yeah, let me transfer it or give me a week. Yeah. Okay, that's all I needed to know. I'm going to go work on my plants now. I'm going to go sit in my apothecary closet and look at all my jars. <laughs> because of your podcast, I have become closer with my husband and our intimacy is slowly getting better. He has become more understanding when I'm tapped out and helps me feel that I am not obligated to fulfill his sexual needs. For a long time since I felt like his mom... For a long time, since I felt like his mom, it felt like a chore I had to do, not something I enjoy. Now I want to please him and have that form of connection more often because of the changes that we implemented thanks to you two. That's crazy to hear. It's good to hear. I can now recognize qualities in my husband that are similar to Chris and see that my husband is a gentleman and I should let him lead. I used to be terrified that if I'm not in control of everything, it will fall apart and now I'm letting go. And now that I'm letting go, I see the leader my husband is. Peaches, I want to say thank you for who you are as a person. For a long time, I have thought that I needed to be a strong, independent woman that doesn't need a man. I can do it on my own, but I've learned that I don't want to. Oh, it's so exhausting on your own. I hate that statement so much. I can do it on my own. No, I'm a strong, independent woman that don't oh, need yeah. no man. I hate that more than the yeah. ick. That used to be my anthem. Like, yeah. And how did it work out for you? It didn't. Yeah, exactly. It did not. I changed up. I changed up my thought process. I started juggling some different things, and I noticed it's a lot easier to juggle like a softball versus a chainsaw. Yep. Yep. I've often been made fun of for being a soft soul, submissive, and my kindness is often seen as weakness and used against me in different areas of my life. I felt guilty for being kind and submissive. Seeing someone who values what I value has made me more confident and has made my husband more confident. Really? Societal pressures are a motherfucker. They, they really are. And it's because we, we allow it to happen. It's so rare when something doesn't feel right to us for us to go, this doesn't feel right, and like really not follow along. Mm -hmm. y you look at... The COVID thing, for example, the amount of people that just went along with that shit, even though they were like, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, they did, because that's what the society was saying you had to do. Like you get along to get along, mm -hmm. even though you don't agree with it. Yeah. Does me being confident make you feel more confident? What do you mean? I don't know. She said that her being more confident has made her husband feel more confident. And I was just wondering if that was a thing. Well, I mean, it. so that depends on how how she's more confident. She's more confident in him. Mm -hmm. because you believe in him, he makes me feel invincible. Really? Yeah. Totally different thing though. You being confident in you doesn't make me confident in me. That's mm -hmm. a you thing. But like when you're there hyping me up and pushing me on to do shit, like it's go time. Yeah. So, so yeah. And that aspect, that's true. I saw that yesterday when I said, fucking, we'll fucking send, send it, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We we went through that puddle, came out the other side soaked, and, and I was our like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you, that was a full send, babe. And our son came running up, and he was like, you did it. And we were all wet, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead yeah. of just riding his four wheeler, yeah, over, he jumped off and ran. He to was us. so stoked. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> even though kids can be dicks, they are like the biggest hype man. They can be. Last night, I was putting the kids to bed, and our daughter looked at me, and she was like, 
you're the best mommy. And I was like, oh. And she was like, no, really. And you're so beautiful. And I was like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so kind. Our son does that a lot, too. You're the best mommy ever. And I was like, me? Really? You should tell Pops that we want to get that on a cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has been taking more of a leading role, and I've been able to start letting go of who my mom wanted me to be and become more comfortable with who I am and who I want to be. There you go. In addition, that confidence has allowed me to initiate intimate moments with my husband, which I rarely had in the past. Right, because you're not you're not holding on to an expectation that someone else has of you. Mm -hmm. If I was worried about what other people thought of me and us, we wouldn't dance in public. No, I wouldn't fucking dance with you in the van where everybody could see it. I would never flirt with you in public. I would I wouldn't we wouldn't do the podcast and be flirty the way that we are on the podcast because people don't need to see that. Right, I don't give a fuck what people think about us. I'm happy mm -hmm. over here living my best life. You can you can judge and be salty about that all you fucking want. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Sucks to suck, nerd. I don't know what to tell you. I want to blow another raspberry. <laughs> yeah. I can feel us leaving the roommate phase thanks to you two. We struggle with balancing our time together, but now we have a goal to work towards. He is working to have a change in career and potentially become an Air Force, Air Force lawyer. Oh, that was so difficult. So many R's in that. Why did you laugh? Because I know your RW thing. It's so difficult. <laughs> Hopefully, a year from now, we will both be working day jobs with me working part-time and getting ready to plan a family. By no means is our marriage perfect, but time spent and intimacy have been our biggest struggle. I look forward to hearing your advice. Again, I thank you both deeply, and I will continue to listen and support. Whether you two read this or reply... I'm so very grateful that I found you both on TikTok. Let's do the update. Update. January 29th. Oh, wow. Like two days ago. Yeah. Hello. I wanted to follow up with some updates. Unfortunately, oh, a lot has remained the same since I emailed. I did receive a new position prior to my husband receiving deployment orders. My work schedule is now more manageable and makes more time for me to spend with him. However, it is still on night shift. Unfortunately, because he has been gone, we have not totally been able to implement the goals we set in place. Ooh, because this is a test. This is the universe trying to be like, all right, you guys figured that out. Now what are you going to do to get there? Yeah. He has done great with communication and making an, the effort for me to be heard and express myself while he's been gone. He recently has applied to a program via the military that would allow me to drop down to part-time job or even quit altogether to pursue being a homemaker, one day a mother, and pursue my passion of publishing a book. We will get some news later this month. Ooh, I hope you guys get it. How exciting. We pray to God that he gets accepted. It will be a huge blessing for our marriage and our future. If you have any questions, please reach out. I love the podcast, the insight, and perspective you both have. Thank you for being a light in this world. Is that the end? That's it. Ironically That's enough, it. my only suggestion was for her to get off the night shift. Yeah. That was going to be my suggestion. You guys figured all this out already. The issue is the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's just the way shit's going to be. Yep. We said in another episode that if we have to suffer for five years to have the, a dope fucking rest of our life, that five years is just a commitment we're going to make and suffer through that shit. Yeah. And this last year has kind of sucked. Yeah. A lot of dope things have happened, but there's been a lot of, a lot of trials. Yep. Yeah. Lots of change. Yep. Lots of uncomfortable. Yep. We went from having a whole lot of free time to zero free time, mm -hmm. but we still make the intimacy work. Yeah, it's just evolved. Yeah. Got to prioritize shit. Correct. Got that little dating app that tells you when to do chores. Get the dating app that tells you when to fucking go on dates, right? Use it yeah. to be like Thursday night, 7 p.m. dinner, mm -hmm. you know? That's that's really what I got in this. It just comes down to you guys not having enough free time. Yeah. But that's, that's normal shit. You're going to suffer from time to time especially when you're trying to make ends meet. You know, this comes down to what we were saying earlier in terms of people who have to be together for finances. Right. So I got nothing on that one. It sounds like they, they figured the shit out. They just need more time together. 
I enjoyed that. Even though even though some of the emails kind of got me a little heated. Yeah. I really enjoyed the hypotheticals that we did. Yeah. It was nice. This is the first time we've hit almost three hours on a podcast in a while. Ooh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Yeah, two hours and 41 minutes before editing. So it'll probably be around two and a half hours. Yeah. So, because I know I got a lot of phone calls that I got to cut. I like spending this time with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. You're not sick of it? No. <laughs> Talking to you is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. I get to hear your voice for like three hours straight. Let's go. Well, it gives us a reason to work through other people's problems too. Mm -hmm. So it gives us like, you know, we had that conversation about the control and, yeah. and things like that. We would have otherwise never had those discussions. I would have never found out that your phone is just absolute chaos. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> On that phone, you've watched me throw my phone across rooms. I have. Yeah. I don't give a shit about that thing. So like, I really, do, I just don't want to see the notifications. Right. Because if I open my home screen and there's red bubbles everywhere, I have to clear it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like I've actually turned off a lot of notifications on a lot of apps. Why do you, why do you feel the need to clear it? Because I don't want to see the red bubbles. Okay. It's a reminder that I'm not doing something that I need to be doing. Gotcha. And in reality, I don't <laughs> need to be doing it. I'm so sorry. What? It's a reminder of something that you don't want to be doing. Is that, that what I, you said? It's a reminder of things that I need to be doing. Oh, that you need to be doing. But I don't need to do it. Gotcha. I don't okay. I don't need to check DoorDash because I haven't ordered in five days and there's a bubble there. Right. I don't need to check every single email that comes onto my phone. There's seven fucking email addresses on there and 99.9% .9 of it's bullshit. No, so, I get that. I have like 10. Right. So like I, I don't need to be involved in all. I don't need... To know that I haven't logged into my game in 15 hours and they want me to come back. I don't need to know that somebody on Facebook liked a post that I made a week ago. Yeah, I throw all that shit away. It doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. All it does is distract me from the things that I need to get done. And the more that I'm on my phone fucking with those things, the less I'm actually doing. That's how I feel about spam messages. Right, but you, if you're in your inbox looking at that, that's different than it being on your screen. Do you go in your inbox and just randomly look at stuff? No, but I'm go I go into my inbox for a lot of things like, oh, I need to message Brittany and miss Brittany's three scrolls down because I have 20 spam messages along with everybody else that I've messaged. I don't do that. I have to get rid of those spam messages. I pull down and type the person's name. I don't do that. I didn't know I could do that. Pulls up what I'm looking for. I'm not searching for. Sh I'm not like manually scrolling. I am. Hang on. <laughs> Would you fucking look at that? Didn't you work for a cell phone provider? <laughs> I did, yeah. But I'm not technical support. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I had to tell people that. I would have people come in, can you help me get into my Gmail? I don't work for Google. <laughs> if your phone's not ringing, I can help you with that. Yeah. If you're getting like phone disconnected. Let's take a look at your account. I can do that. You need to make a payment on your bill? Word. People put too much time into things that don't matter. Yeah, they do. I want to go dye my hair. Okay. Well, let's wrap it up. Okay. Guys, remember you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.